Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku bloomed late and found new allies part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. It was 9pm at night and all was finally peaceful at the Midoriya residence. It had been a particularly long night for Inko Midoriya. Her first and only son Izuku had gotten a little too much of the All Might All American vanilla bean ice cream, then had to chase the sugar-fueled two-year-old around the whole apartment for nearly two whole hours until he finally crashed. Inko changed her little monster into his All Might PJS and placed him in bed with a light kiss on his forehead. She finally dropped onto the couch with a huge sigh of relief. Once she finally felt her shoulders relax she used her quirk to pull the TV remote towards her and changed the channel to one of her favorite soap operas. Not ten minutes went by when Inko suddenly smelt something burning. For a brief moment she thought she had just left dinner in the stove a little too long. Then it hit her like a truck. She finished making and eating dinner hours ago. So that could only mean. Inko expected the worst and ran off the couch to Izuku's room. She flung open the door only to find the one thing she didn't want to find. Her son's room completely engulfed in flames with her son in the center of the blaze. Inko let out a terrified scream that filled the whole house. She then used her quirk with Jedi Force levels of power and pulled the fire extinguisher from under the kitchen cabinet. The object flew out and around the corner directly into Inko's hands. She yanked the pin out and immediately unloaded the whole extinguisher into the room. Inko finally stopped when the fire was nothing but smoke and the bottle was empty. She collapsed to her knees and began to breathe heavily from the stress. Then she realized Izuku was still in the room somewhere. Izuku. She called out in panic. Suddenly the foam began to wiggle around with green hair just poking out and little Izuku waddled out covered from head to toe in foam. The smile shone brightly on his little freckles face as he walked up to his mom saying joyfully, Mommy Mommy. Snowman Snowman. He giggled while showing her his foamed covered body. Inko was only second away from tears now seeing her little boy totally fine. She picked up the two-year-old while replying, Yes Izuku you are a snowman. She hugged the child to her chest and quickly noticed three things. One he had no burn marks whatsoever. Two he was unusually warm like he just got out of a warm bath but not covered in water. And three he was totally naked which was odd since she remembered putting Izuku in PJS. Many hours later at the hospital, Inko sat there eyeing the doctor with an intense gaze as he looked through a wad of papers he had on his clipboard while pushing his thick glasses up every so often. While Izuku sat nearby drawing a sloppy drawing of All Might, the doctor finally looked up from his papers and at the young woman, she looked at the doctor with a hopeful smile. Though that smile faded as he said in a half-hearted tone, Sorry ma'am but your son doesn't have a quirk. What? She asked in surprise. We've run over his results and your son shows no sign of having a quirk? I'm sorry replies the doctor. Well that can't possibly be right. Run them again. And Co demanded in disbelief. We did ma'am, four times in fact. But we can find anything that shows your son has some kind of fire-based quirk. Besides your son is way too young to even show signs of having a quirk. How old did you say he was too? Are you sure you didn't just imagine it? The doctor asked skeptically. And Co had a shocked and insulted expression on her face which she then raged off on the doctor. Do you think I imagined my son's room engulfed in flames? Do you want to come to my apartment and see the imaginary scorch marks on the walls, floor, and ceiling? The burnt posters, melted figurines, and bed reduced to ash. Do you want to see the fire extinguisher I completely emptied? Or did I imagine my son come out of the form the blaze without a single burn? His skin is warm as a fireplace. Or the fact he was but naked despite the fact I clearly remember putting him in PJS. At this point the doctor was on the floor with his chair tipped over looking up at the sweet looking women who now looked like a rabid wolverine. This being because Inko marched over to him with her words she exclaimed in her explanation. Then I don't know what to tell you. The doctor fearfully choked out. Inko huffed angrily and picking her two-year-old with his drawing supplies and matched out of there with every member of the hospital staff staring at the fuming woman. About three years later, Izuku was now five years old and in that time many things had happened. His childhood friend became his bully after getting his quirk and Izuku didn't. Izuku getting diagnosed as quirkless at age 4, becoming the playground punching bag, and being told time and time again that he couldn't be a hero. All while Inko always remained her son about that one fateful night and always telling him he could be a hero once his quirk finally showed itself. This was one of the few things in his life that kept Izuku's love and want to become a hero. While that and two other things or rather two other people, who were some of Izuku's oldest friends next to Kachin. It all started on a cold and rainy day. And Izuku was splashing around in the puddles along the street in his blue rain boots, all might raincoat, and all might umbrella. Izuku was happy just to be playing by himself, splashing without a care in the world. Moments like this made him happy having a quirk meant nothing. 
However, it was still quite lonely splashing by himself. He wished it could be like it was before with Kachin, not judging each other by their quirk and simply enjoying one another's company. Then a strange noise broke Izuku out of his thought. It sounded like shivering mixed with sobs and heavy sniffles with the occasional sneeze. Izuku looked around for the source of the sound and saw a small figure hunched over in the nearby alleyway. Izuku walked over to the figure and saw a boy, no older than him, sitting in a puddle, hunched over, shivering violently, and completely drenched. Izuku stared at the boy unsure of what to do or say. He finally worked up the nerve to speak and the only thing to come out was a simple, hi. The boy looked up from his spot and stared back at Izuku. From his face he was definitely as old as Izuku, with black hair and eyes that shined like two pieces of gold. He didn't say anything and simply continued to stare at him. Are you okay? Izuku asked. No response. Do you need help? He asked again. No response. Are you hurt? He asked. No response. But this time a slight shake of the head. Aren't you cold and wet? He asked. No response and another head shake. Izuku wasn't getting anywhere with him, and he couldn't tell if he needed his help or not. He thought for a moment and then asked, Are you hungry? Still no response, but this time got a very rapid and firm head shake no. Thought that was quickly shown as a lie when the boy's stomach voiced a complaint and quite loudly too. The boy's face went red from embarrassment, and Izuku smiled kindly at him. He then reached into his backpack and shuffling through it took out a sandwich covered in tinfoil. He stretched his hand out towards the boy and said, Here you can have it. I was gonna save it for later, but I think you need it more than I do. The boy looked at Izuku in shock with his mouth gaped open in awe. He looked between him and the sandwich he was holding unsure if this was real or not. Slowly the boy took the sandwich from Izuku's hand. He looked up at Izuku's smiling face to make sure this was real. And Izuku simply said, You're welcome. The boy flinched for a moment at his kindness then immediately tore open the foil and wolfed down the whole sandwich like his life depends on it. When he finished the sandwich he took a few breaths from only inhaling the food. When he caught his breath he saw Izuku offering his umbrella to him, the boy looked at him with a confused expression. I'm guessing you don't have an umbrella, do you? Izuku asked. No response, but got a very solemn head shake. Izuku placed the umbrella in the boy's hands and said, You can have mine, I have a raincoat so I don't need it. The boy looked between the umbrella and Izuku still trying to figure out if this was real or not. Izuku couldn't tell at that moment, since he was all wet, but the golden-eyed boy was actually crying in joy from what he did for him. Izuku waved goodbye to the boy and merrily walked off with the satisfaction of committing his first act of heroism. Not long after reveling in his own good deed he heard footsteps following from behind. He turned around and saw the golden-eyed boy from before following close behind him like a puppy, while holding the All Might above him. Izuku stopped in his tracks and looked at the boy who was now looking at the ground. He saw that the boy was actually very injured with multiple cuts and bruises all over his body. In addition his clothing was also very worn and ragged looking appearing mothy along with his soaking wet body that was still violently shaking. They continued to stand in silence until Izuku finally spoke, Don't you have somewhere to go? No response, but a slight head shake. Are you hurt? He asked. Still no response, yet this time got a nod. Izuku then took the golden-eyed boy's hand and said, Let's go to my house. My mommy can patch you up and you can dry up too. I'm pretty sure I have some extra clothes so you can change. The boy looked at Izuku with a shocked expression as tears started to flow down his wet face again. I'm Izuku Midoriya by the way, what's yours? He asked the boy. The boy gulped down some air and in a very small tone replied, Kuna Kina, can I call you Ko-san? Izuku asked, Ko nodded, and that was the start of a beautiful friendship. Later at the Midoriya residence, and Ko was at the stove cooking up dinner for herself and Izuku once he came back from playing. And Ko then heard the front door open and heard her son's voice called out, I'm home. And Ko smiled and put her cooking spoon down as she called back, Welcome home sweetie. Mommy I brought a friend over, can he stay for dinner? Her son called out as she heard two sets of feet patter towards her. A friend. Izuku made a new friend. And Ko was overjoyed to hear this as she excitedly took off her apron to meet this new friend. Of course they can, who are they? And Ko asked as she turned around only for her jaw to drop in horror. Standing next to her smiling son was a boy no older than him soaking wet, with ragged ripped clothing, covered in injuries, and shaking like a leaf. Izuku extended his hand towards and introduced the boy to his mother, Mommy this is. Though he never got to finish as Inko immediately ran into the hallway. Ko-san. He trailed off. Ko came close to Izuku and whispered something in his ear. Izuku shook his head at the boy's question and replied, No I'm sure she like you, but I'm not sure why she just left. Suddenly Inko came right back into the room storming in like a hurricane. She dashed over to Ko who staggered back from the woman and froze in place from fear. Though his fear immediately melted as she draped a big fluffy and warm towel over the boy's body. She ran his hand across his freezing face with a warrior expression on her face. Oh dear God, you're ice cold. She exclaimed in panic towards the boy. 
Ko then accidentally sneezed right in Inko's face. Inko wiped herself off and placed her hand against his forehead. She pulled it back and said, And you have a cold you poor dear. Izuku where did you find this poor child? She asked her son. In an alley. And his name is Kuna Kinnon. He was hungry so I gave him my sandwich. He didn't have anything to protect him from the rain so I gave him my umbrella. He was cold and injured so I brought him here to heal and warm up. He answered her truthfully. Well I'm glad you did. I don't think you could have survived out there in this weather. She stated towards the child. And Ko picked herself up and turning to Izuku she instructed him. Keep him warm Izuku while I run a hot bath. Okay. Okay mommy. He stated happily. And Ko went back into the kitchen and turned off the appliances before going into the bathroom and turning on the water to fill the tub. Once the tub was filled with hot water she went back into the kitchen and saw Izuku and Ko sitting in the couch with Ko wrapper in over a dozen blankets and Izuku showing him his quirk analysis notebook. And Ko cooed at this sweet sight then brought the young child into the bathroom where she helped him into the tub and watch his skin stop shivering and relax in the warm water. She also took notice that Ko was extremely thin and pale, especially for a five-year-old. Izuku came after with a bunch of bath toys wanting to bath with Ko. And Ko almost bite down on her tongue trying to say no, but quickly gave in seeing his pleading eyes and Ko wanting Izuku to be there too. A moment later Izuku was in the tub with the golden-eyed boy splashing around playing underwater heroes with a plethora of bath toys. After Inko washed the two boys and scrubbed their heads with enough shampoo she helped them out of the tub and into some towels. She then went into Izuku's room and got out two set of clothing for the boys. She knew she could let Ko wear his other clothes since they were basically nothing but rags. She helped the boys change and saw that Izuku's clothes fit Ko very well. In fact they were so loose from how thin he was, which made Inko worry about the boys' health. Once she sat the boys back on the couch she got a thromator and placed it into Ko's mouth. When she took it out she saw he was running a high fever. She then got the med kit and began to patch as many of Ko's injuries as she could. After she was done she told the boys to keep themselves busy while she finished dinner. She then went into the cabinet and pulled out some medicine and a soup can. She continued with the dinner she started to preep and started making the soup. Once she was finished she sat the boys down gave them their meals. Izuku immediately dug in like a vicious animal while Ko simply started at his food like it was something foreign. She looked at the boy and asked, What's wrong honey? It's just soup. You don't like chicken noodle soup. I can make something else. She offered. Ko shook his head then his shoulders started to shake and then his whole body. And Ko was worried he was cold again but soon saw the tears flowing down his face. Thank you. He repeated over and over again as he held his eyes shut tight. And Ko hugged the child into her chest as she tried to calm him down while he was still thanking her. After the two boys ate their fill and Ko took some medicine. And Ko eventually put the two boys to bed with both boys sleeping peacefully in Izuku's bed. Inko still cooed at this sight but still had her worried mother sense at full volume. She had tried to call Ko-san's parents with the number she got from him, though no one picked up on the other end. She hoped that his parents were doing okay with the fact their child had gone missing. Inko thought it would probably be the best to take Ko to his home personally. The following morning. The next morning the boys had a nice breakfast together and played a bit more before Inko took both boys back to Ko's home. Izuku was actually excited to meet Ko-san's parents, while Ko on the other hand did not look the least bit thrilled about it. He kept his head down, didn't say a word, and walked extremely slow. And Ko knew something was up but she thought it was best not to ask now. After some walking they eventually found that Ko lived on a back road some miles away in a dingy neighborhood with run-down homes, trash littered about, and a bunch of rough-looking neighbors living all around giving the group the stink eye. And Ko couldn't believe what they were seeing and kept the two boys as close to her as possible. There had to be some kind of mistake there's no way that Ko lives in a place like this. But she checked the card and saw that the mailbox and address both matched so this definitely was the place. And Ko gulped and walked up the front gate of the quietest and dingiest looking house on the block. She walked up to the rotten looking door with both boys behind her. She knocked on the door a few times and waited. Nothing. She knocked again this time harder. Still nothing. She pressed the doorbell and still nothing. The group stood by the door for a good three minutes before Ko said, well I guess no one is home, maybe we'll come back another time. To be honest Inko was lying. She just had wanted to get out of this hole in the mud and not let poor Ko stay here even for another moment. She would gladly keep him at her home for another day or twenty plus. If it meant committing child abduction then she would gladly do it. Though before then could even turn away from the door it immediately opened up causing the group to jump. In the doorway stood an enormous woman. And that meant enormous in weight not height. She looked more like a walking tower of meat than a person. She wore a huge pink floral nightgown covered in stains, pink curlers in her yellow hair, a bottle of beer in one hand and a cigarette in the other. She had a very displeased expression as she took a puff of her cigarette and blew the smoke in Inko's direction. Inko coughed from the sour smell invading her senses. When she could breathe again she asked, Mrs. Kinnon. 
The woman looked at her and in a deep deadpan tone replied, No, that's my brother-in-law's surname and her good for wife my sister. Now who are you? So that means this is Ko's aunt, Inko thought to herself. Inko sweat dropped trying to find the right words and replied, Um, I'm Inko Midoriya. And I, uh, found your nephew. The fat woman looked down and saw Izuku and Ko standing behind Inko's legs, while Ko was looking away from from his aunt and instead at the ground. She took another puff from her cigarette and said, Oh there you are brat. We'll get your ass inside. I get paid to keep you here not watch you. Wait. Inko suddenly shouted at the huge woman who looked at her inquisitively. Inko straightened herself and continued saying, Can I just say one last thing to you nephew before we go? The woman rolled her eye and in a disquieted sigh said, Fine. And she walked back in the house. Once she was out of earshot and Ko came down to one knee and taking Ko by his shoulders told him in a very serious tone. Now dear, if you ever feel like you need to get away from this place at any time you come to my apartment alright. Ko blinked a few times before asking in a meal tone. Really? Really mommy? Do you mean it? Izuku asked excitedly. I do, I mean every word. And Ko said seriously. Thank you. Ko said quietly. Oh and before I forget. And Ko stated while taking something out of her pocket. She then deposited a large scratched up golden coin that glittered bright in the light. Ko's eyes immediately lit up for the first time and he snacked the coin from the woman's hand, my lucky coin. He said at normal volume for the first time. I found it in your pants pocket. Inko explained. Thank you. Ko thanked her while hugging her. Inko hugged him back and told him, you can call me Auntie Inko if you'd like to, Ko-san. Thank you Auntie. He thanked Inko. It was then Izuku's turn to give Ko a gift and deposited the All Might umbrella he gave to Ko the day prior. Ko looked between the parasol and Izuku and reluctantly took it from him. It's yours. I told you I don't need it I still have my raincoat. So next time it rains you can use to come over and we can play in the rain. He exclaimed joyful. Ko smiled and nodded his head before waving goodbye to his new friend and going inside his home. Though this was only the first of many adventure with Izuku. A few months had gone by and now Izuku and Ko were thick as thieves. Doing pretty much everything together and spending almost every hour of every day together. Ko would even come by every so often every week to spend a night or two at the Midoriya's place. Over time Ko started to gain some healthy weight. His injuries all healed up and his color came back. Ko looked like a normal five-year-old, for the most part. Well apart from one thing that made his bond with Izuku even stronger, he too was quirkless, at least that's what they both thought. One day as the boys were walking through town playing hero and very quickly they made an emergency turn down an alleyway after seeing some rough kids from Ko's neighborhood, ones who liked to beat on Ko for fun. Unfortunately that very alleyway was also a dead end and the bullies found the two boys thanks to one of the boys having mutation type quick that gave him all abilities of a lizard and sniffed them out with ease. The three boys stared down at the two younger boys like lions cornering a zebra, and the two younger boys stared back at the older boys preparing for the worst. The three bullies were tenors old each and really mean looking. The one on the right was the lizard who sniffed them out. He had green scales, large yellow eyes, and sharp teeth and claws with a tail. The one on the left was another mutation type quirk that gave him the head of a jack-o'-lantern with a lit fire on the inside. Additionally he had really nimble and flexible limbs, along with the ability to shoot fire from his angry looking pumpkin head. The one in the middle was the leader and the biggest of the three. He had an emitter type quirk that gave him short range teleportation, and he was quick on top of that. The three bullies smiled sincerely at the two boys who were doing their best to hold their ground. Well well well, said the leader, if it isn't quirkless one and his psychic weakling too. He vexed them. What do you want Mabataki? Ko shouted at the leader Mabataki. What do we want? What do we want? Mabataki repeated sarcastically. You know same well what we want. Izuku then stepped in from of Ko and shouted while putting his hands up in defense. I won't let you hurt him. Oh you should be more worried about yourself. Pipsqueak. Came the crackled voice of the pumpkin-headed boy. Yeah, if you're going to protect him then who's going to protect you? The lizard's boy laughed with a deep hiss. Why do you hate Ko-san and me so much? What have we done to you three? Izuku exclaimed. Why? Oh you know why? Mabataki replied dangerously. Quirkless loser like you are meant for one thing only, and for people like us to beat you down and show you who's the top dog of this world. He shouted at them. Plus it's fun to kick you around from time to time. Laughed the pumpkin-headed boy. The three bullies took fighting stances and the Izuku stood in front of Ko with his arms raised up in defense for his friend. Mabataki immediately teleported from sight and Izuku braces for his attack. Mabataki appeared right in front of Izuku rearing back a hard right hook. Izuku closed his eyes, clenched his teeth, covered his head, and braces for the worst. Though instead of feeling his right hook colliding with his face, Izuku felt someone push him out of the firing line. Izuku opened his eyes fast enough just to see Ko pushing him and taking the full force of the attack. Mabataki punched Ko directly on his nose causing it to immediately gush blood and send him flying backwards. He was sent so far back he actually hit the wall behind him. 
Not only that a piece of the brick wall had stuck out just big enough that it hit Ko right in a very sensitive spot on the back of his head. Ko immediately felt searing hot pain explode in the back of head and spread all through his skull. Ko fell to the ground gripping the back of his head unable to speak or even gasp for air. He twitched on the ground feeling his sense and thoughts racing at mock speeds. Izuku stood there for a moment watching what his friend did for him then shot to his feet and ran to his friend's side. Ko-san, Ko-san, are you okay? He asked in panic. Ko didn't reply and could only twitch from the pain and nearly breath. Suddenly Ko's golden eyes flashed for a very brief moment and Izuku along with the bullies felt a strange sensation pass over their whole bodies. Like they had just walked through an electrical field. They could feel pure energy pass over their bodies. The three bullies brushed it off and continued to advance on the young kids. Oh, trying to play the hero, shrimp, hiss the lizard boy. We'll clap clap to that. It only seems fitting that we give you a hero's fight, right? Laughed the pumpkin-headed boy. Now that you're like this, it's going to be too easy to pound you. Oh well, we'll make the best of it won't we? Mabataki stated to his toadies. The other two laughed in agreements. The three of them continued to advance and Izuku draped his body over his friend to protect him from the onslaught. But then something quite amazing happened. As the boys rushed them a cat jumped from dumpster and pounced on the lizard boy causing him to freak out from the surprise and claws being dug into his scaly face. He crashed into Mabataki who accidentally teleported into a pile of garbage. The lizard boy continued to scream and jump around trying to pull the cat off his face. But his tail whipped around and slammed into the pumpkin-headed boy who slammed back first into the alley wall. His head shot up from the impact and spewed out fire from his pumpkin head. The fire hit an old fire escape and the whole thing fell in front of the bullies cutting them off from the two boys who were watching this whole thing unfold before them. The lizard boy finally yanked the cat off his face and threw the animal at the pumpkin head boy. The cat jumped off his stomach on onto the other side of the fire escape near the two boys. Unfortunately this also caused the pumpkin headed boy to spew fire again at the fire escape, which was coated in some flammable substance, and the whole thing went up in flames. The three boys picked themselves up from their embarrassing defeat and scampered off crying. Though the two boys still weren't out of the woods yet as the now on flaming fire escape had trapped them between the alley and the angry alley cat. However, another stroke of luck hit them as the wall, where Ko hit his head, suddenly crumbled and left a hole big enough for the boys to escape through. Rawo. The cat meowed lazily and hopped through the hole to safety. Izuku the scraped up Ko and also went through the hole. When they did they found themselves at a large park, more specifically the picnic area where people came to eat lunch and where food trucks sold such food. Izuku sat Ko at one of the concert tables where the golden-eyed boy laid his head down from the now numbing pain in his head. Ko had regained his motor skills and sense after a short time. Izuku sat next to him also dazed from whatever just happened. What happened back there? Ko asked Izuku. I don't know. Izuku replied truthfully. Suddenly the smell of the food trucks wafted into the boy's senses and their mouths watered and stomachs growled. I'm hungry, said Ko. Me too. Izuku agreed. Unfortunately for the boys they hadn't had a single yen between them. Then another miraculous thing happened for them. A well-dressed man holding an extra-large order of chocolate-covered octopus fritters in his hands sat down next to the two boys to eat his meal. Just before he could take a bite his phone rang loudly in his suit pocket. Annoyed by this he whipped his phone out and in an annoyed tone answered half-heartedly, yeah. The speaker at the other end said something that caused a man to gain a look of fear across his face. The man replied, what? Please tell me you're joking. The speaker must have confirmed whatever it was he was so worried about caused the man jumped from his seat and shouted through the phone. Hold on I'll be there in a second. Izuku saw that the man left his still hot food behind and shouted to the man. Hey mister, you forgot your food. You can have it kid. The man shouted back not even looking at Izuku while running off. Izuku and Ko looked at each other in serious confusion as to their want for food was suddenly answered for. But they didn't think on it too hard when they immediately began to dig into the sweet hot food. After they finished and their bellies were full they then tried to figure out what's been going on as of late. After some time of discussion and throwing ideas around they soon came to the conclusions that they had no idea what happened. However, Ko got a crazy idea of what might have happened but didn't tell Izuku all the details. Ko immediately ran from the table and through the park with Izuku hot on his tail. After a short while Ko ran up to a one-way street lane in town and looked both ways. Izuku caught up breathing heavily and asked Ko what he was doing. Though Ko didn't answer him and continued to look down the street until something caught his eye. A large delivery truck coming down the street at top speed. For whatever possessed him, Ko stood out in the street in the truck's path. Izuku immediately freaked out and ran onto the street trying to pull Ko out of the way. But Ko wouldn't even budge an inch. He pushed Izuku out of the way and told him to stay back. Izuku refused rightly so not knowing his previous head injury was probably the cause for this crazy idea. Izuku jumped back into the street trying his best to pull his friend out from committing suicide. 
But the truck was almost upon them and Izuku being Izuku did the one thing he could and shut his eyes blindly trusting his friend, as if my some form of magic or other world doing the trick was stopped by yet another stroke of pure chance. On one side of the street a person with mutation type quirk that made him look like a goat suddenly tripped and his horn slammed right into the gut of a man with white hair. The man gauge a few times and then threw up a strange white substance on the street. At the same time a woman in heels with a long flowing dress suddenly tripped on her own dress and trying to stop her descent grabbed onto a handle of a tar truck and a whole shot of tar fell onto the street. The truck zooming down the roadway ran through the white substance which was a type of natural glue in the hot tar. The truck then slowed its descent until it came to a complete halt only several yards away from the two boys still standing in the road. Izuku fell to his knees feeling pure relief wash over him after that hair-raising experience, while Khan on the other hand had the biggest smile he had on in s very long time. He slumped down a bit then exploded out bouncing up and down yelling and laughing with pure zeal. Izuku looked at his friend like he just lost his mind. How can you be happy about this? He shouted at his friend. We nearly just died if it weren't for that third strange coincidence that happened to dot 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 us. Izuku trailed off knowing what this meant. Ko had a huge bright smile on his face as he too knew what this meant. Izuku, I got my quirk. I got my quirk. I have a quirk. Ko shouted for all to hear. Though the one other sound Ko expected to hear with this news wasn't heard. In fact that lack of this noise was deafening by comparison. He had expected to hear Izuku's squeaky voice cheering with glee alongside him. But even a peep was heard from the green-haired boy. Ko turned around to face Izuku only to see him on the sidewalk hugging his knees and making sobbing noises. Ko knew Izuku was crying but for what reason he didn't know. He thought that he was jealous that Ko had a quirk all along or he was crying tears of joy for him. Ko went with the former. He slowly walked to his friend and asked him, Izuku, are you okay? Ko reaches out to touch Izuku's back, but stopped when Izuku whispered something softly. What was that? Ko asked. Izuku then whipped his head at Ko with tears and snot streaming down his face and in a fear and saddened tone exclaimed, Don't leave me. Ko was very confused as to what Izuku was talking about. Then Izuku lunged at Ko and gripped his shirt while crying into it begged him, Don't hate me now that you have a quirk. Don't leave me cause you have a quirk. Don't make new friends who have a quirk. Don't hurt me cause you have a quirk. Please please Ko-san. Izuku begged him. Ko grabbed Izuku's face pulling him up exclaimed, Wait a minute Izuku. What are you talking about? Izuku sniffed a few times before he answered. When Kachin and the others got their quirks, they started to beat on me and bully me because I didn't have one. So please don't leave me or hate me, please Ko-san. Izuku begged him. Ko really couldn't believe what he was hearing. His fist and closest friend was begging him not to shun him now that he had a quirk all along. But he would never do that, never. And he made sure Izuku knew that well. Izuku look at me. He stated firmly while looking at the green-haired boy. Izuku reluctantly opened his eyes. I'm not like Kachin or those other meanies. I would never abandon you just because I have a quirk now. I've been through all that you have been through and I would never take what I've been through just to do it to my bestest friend in the world. Do do you mean it Ko-san? Izuku asked between sniffles. Ko nodded with gusto. Of course I do. When we get older we'll be heroes together. Quirk or no quirk. Izuku wiped his eyes and no smiling back at his friend truly felt like amazing to know someone like him. Then it dawned on Izuku and he asked, Speaking of quirks, what should we call yours? Ko put a finger up to his chin and replied back, I don't know, do you have anything in mind? Izuku pondered for a moment then said, Well your quirk does seem to make the most unusually lucky things happen so how about? Luck, I love it. Ko exclaimed. Ko grabbed Izuku's hand and standing him up shouted for all to hear. Look out world the luckiest boy in the world and the smartest boy in the world are going to become the greatest heroes to ever live. Yeah, Izuku cheered in agreeance, thought that was only the start of one story to the next start of yet another story for the duo to become a trio. Many months later, it was months after Ko found out about his lucky quirk and Ko was using it to its full potential, even if he had no ideas how it actually worked. If he wanted something or need to get somewhere or was in a fight, a series of events would occur and it would happen as if by some stroke of luck, though it didn't just affect his surroundings but also himself. If he got sick or injured he would recover with unusual speed and not get the same sickness again or scar no matter the severity. He even started to gain more weight and color returned to his skin as he was able to get food not just from the Midorias but also by himself. He even majored to get himself an entire new wardrobe. Where he got the funds to get this he never said. Anyway one day the two boys were walking down the street simply enjoying each one's company with Izuku in his All Might t-shirt looking for any pros heroes to spot. And Ko was walking alongside him in his new golden t-shirt and flicking his lucky coin up and down off his thumb. Nothing of extreme interest had happened along their journey, yet anyway. Until the two boys were disturbed by the sound of three pairs of feet running towards them in a voice that called out, Hey you two. The two boys turned around puzzled by whoever wanted their attention. In front of them stood three boys all around the age of ten. 
The one to the right had electricity circulating around his body with neon blue hair so he must have an emitter quirk that gave him electrokinesis. The one on the left was unusually tall for a 10-year-old so he must have some form of gigantification quirk. The one in the middle was muscular for a 10-year-old and the earth beneath his feet seemed to rumble slightly in addition his flesh seemed to be made out of earth. So his quirk had something to do with earth manipulation and also seemed to be the leader. The three boys were breathing heavily and completely out of breath. Their clothes were torn from the remain of a fight it looked like, and they all had the same angry expressions. The two boys looked around and then pointed to themselves to make sure they were the ones they called out. Yeah you two, we're talking to you both. The earth-flushed boy replied angrily. Can we help you? Ko asked. Yeah you can. For starters you can stand right there as we beat on you two like a pair of kettle drums. The electric boy growled. What are you talking about? We don't even know you. Izuku replied nervously. Don't think we don't know. The earth-fleshed boy snapped at him. We remember those shirts and those hairstyles. You two have been making a mockery of us all day. I don't know how you two were able to outrun us all the times prior, but we have you now. And you two ain't going nowhere. The earth-fleshed boy growled dangerously as the pavement raised from the ground and enveloped his arms. The electric boy rubbed his hands together and his whole body started to glow with pure energy, while the giant boy cracked his knuckles and smirked at them. Izuku looked at Ko knowing he had gained a bit of a habit for pulling jokes, but Ko shrugged and shook his head no. This made Izuku confused and scared at the same time not knowing what they were talking about and them in a case of mistaken identity. Izuku stood behind Ko knowing his lucky power would somehow get them out of this bind, and Ko stood at the ready for whatever they were gonna throw at him. The earth boy was the first to attack launching himself from the ground by two pillars of pavement at his feet and reading back his arms for some stony punches. Izuku gripped Ko's shirt tightly in the anticipation and Ko stood unmoving and unfazed with a cocky grin on his face. Just before the boy could wallop them, a green flash suddenly zoomed by them and said green flash hit the earth boy in the face and sent him flying in the other direction. He slammed into a mailbox with letters flying all over the place. Everyone who saw this was stunned with their jaws dropped to the floor. Even Ko who was usually unfazed by strange happenings to occur. Though this one was quite strange even for him. The earth boy got back up running his now bruised face in pain and looking at the two shock boy with murderous intent in his eyes. He shouted at the other two boy of his group, don't just stand there you idiots, get them. The giant boy took the hint and ran over to the younger boys ready to punt them with his giant foot. But the green flash ran into the giant's foot causing him to kick a nearby fire hydrant, busting it open, and soaking the giant the earth boy and the electric boy. The giant grabbed his foot from the pain hopping up and down while causing slight tremors in the process. The blue-haired electric boy shook himself off and growling at the two younger boys. Okay pipsqueaks play time's over. The electric boy shouts then recharged himself. No you idiot, cried the earth boy running up to the electric boy. But it was too late as the electric boy discharged and his electricity arched through the water and shocked the giant boy and the earth boy. They all screamed from the pain and when the electric boy finally stopped discharging and the other two boys stood in place with smoke coming off their bodies. Then the giant fell right on top of the other two boys pinning him under his huge and heavy body. Izuku and Ko looked at what just happened with odd expressions. Then Izuku jumped up shouting, Woohoo! You did it Ko-san, you did it. Though Ko shook his head with his shocked expression still on his face as he replied, I didn't do that, or at least I think I didn't do it. Before Izuku could ask him what he meant a strange force suddenly yanked on the back of the two boys' pants and suddenly they felt as if they were moving in fast forward. They could see everything around them move at the speed of sound like looking out of a moving car window, only much much faster. They also could feel the wind whipping them on the back of their heads as they also felt the elasticity of their pants pulled to full potential. Eventually the boys suddenly felt the world around them instantly stop. The two boys fell and rolled along the ground coming to a dizzying halt. The boys laid on the ground with swirls in their eyes and completely winded. Eventually the boys came back to their sense and wobbly stood back up on their feet. Izuku, what was that? Ko asked dizzily. I have no idea, Ko-san. Izuku replied trying to get back on his legs that felt like jelly. Izuku then looked around and saw the two of them were in a park, although the closest park from where they previously were was about five miles away. And how did we get here? He asked to no one. I can answer that question. It was me, answered a new voice. The two boys turned in the direction of the new voice and saw another boy around their age standing there. He had green hair and green eyes, though unlike Izuku his shade of green was more of an electric green. He had puggy checks and a huge smile on his face that said I've eaten way too much sugar. Even his body seemed to exert pure pent-up energy, with every part of him moving, bouncing or vibrating. His hair seemed to be slicked back and pointed upwards like it was blown back by a great force of wind. He wore a green shirt and tiny green shorts with green shoes. Who dot 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 are you? Izuku asked cautiously. And what do you mean it was you? Ko added. 
Well first things first my name is Akari Sokuto, and I'm the green thing you saw do all those things to those older kids, and I brought you both here afterwards. He replied cheerfully. But how? Izuku questioned him. I'm really 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 fast. He answered. How fast is fast? Ko asked crossing his arms skeptically. Suddenly the green boy disappeared and then reappeared a moment later with three candy apples. One in each hand and one in his mouth. Can you fall? He offered to them. The two boys took the candy apples from the boy and watched as he ate through his candy apple at the speed of sound, reducing it to a stick. Now that's fast. Ko remarked in shock. Wow that's so cool. Izuku completed him. How fast can you go? Do you always run or can you walk? Do you need to eat a lot? What happens if you don't eat enough? If you run too fast will your skin peel off? Izuku shot a wild host of rapid fire questions. And oddly enough the green speed boy was answering them just as fast as they came. Until Ko took his apple and shoved it in Izuku's mouth to stop him. Izuku you are doing that thing again. He spoke nonchalantly while taking Izuku's apple. Hori, Izuku apologized with the apple still in his mouth. Though on another note, I have some other and more important questions for you, um. Ko trailed off forgetting his name. Hikari Sokuto. He repeated himself. Right, well Hikari-san first question. What exactly is your quirk called and how does it work? Ko asked. My quirk is called electric speed and it makes me run really 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 fast. Hikari answered. Izuku didn't notice it before but Hikari's legs were extremely muscular especially the thighs which were more bulgy than the rest of his leg muscles. Was that really you who took care of those older kids? And why were they trying to beat us up? Ko asked. Yes that really was me. And the reason those older kids wanted to beat you up was actually cause if me. He answered while awkwardly scratching his head. Why's that? Izuku asked while chewing his apple. Well you see, those three are the biggest bullies at my school so to keep them in line I humiliate them regularly. Though they never know it's me cause I'm so fast. Ikari explains. Also the reason they though you two were me was cause of this. Suddenly Ikari zoomed off then zoomed back with a comb and two different shirts. Shirts that looked exactly like theirs. Ikari then performed a sidestep so fast it looked like he was in two places at the same time. And the two Ikaris were wearing the different shirts with two different hairstyles. Hairstyles that looked exactly like the two boys. Why would you dress like us, huh? Were you trying to get us in trouble? Ko demanded while pointing his apple threateningly at the other boy. Hikari held up his hands in defense and replied nervously, No no no, that was never my intent. In case they ever do see me I always change my clothes and hairstyle to throw them off. I always just make the two up as I go. I honestly never knew that two of my disguises would look like two actual people and those people would be in the same area. Honest, Ko cocked a skeptical eyebrow and replied, Okay fine I believe you. Hikari breathed a sigh of relief. Now for my last question Hikari-kun. Are you dot 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 the secret love child of the Roadrunner and Speedy Gonzalez? He asked with the straightest face possible. Both Hikari and Izuku starred at Ko for a solid 20 seconds before Hikari fell to the ground and burst into a fit of uncontrollable laughter. Soon after Izuku joined and laughed just as hard as Hikari, and even Ko stifled back a few giggles. When Hikari regained his sanity again he replied, No, I'm not. I'm still gonna keep that the theory on the back burner. Ko stated, Now that that's all out of the way. Ikari trailed off and Ko raised an eyebrow. Ikari zoomed by Ko and up to Izuku with his hand raised he asked, So do you forgive me? Izuku looked between Ikari and his hand before eventually grabbing it while replying, Yeah we can forgive you. After all you did save us from those boys. Hikari-chan. Ikari smiled at this and exclaimed, I know right. If I haven't decided to turn around to make sure they were still following me, I don't know what could have happened to you both. It was almost like a real stroke of luck hit you too. Meanwhile Ko was standing back smirking widely at what he said and even Izuku let out a small giggle. So what are your quirks? Ikari asked quickly. Izuku's expression changed to melancholy but before he could answer Ko spoke up first saying, My quirk is called luck. Luck isn't a quirk. That just sound like something you made up. Ikari laughed. Yes it is. Ko replied. No it ain't. Ikari argued. Ko then proved his quirk by flicking his lucky coin behind him only for it to head off or ricochet a series of different objects only for it to fly right back into the palm of his open hand. When the coin flew back into his hand, Ko had both eyes closed and caught the coin as if by instinct. He opened one eye and smiled a cockily at Ikari, whose shocked expression turned into a pouting face. Normally after this most people would be too amazed at Ko's unusual quirk and forget about Izuku's quirk. However Hikari wasn't most people and asked immediately after, so what your quirk Izuku? Izuku hung his head downwards while fiddling with his fingertips. He sighed and opened his mouth to reply when Ko spoke up for him saying firmly, that doesn't matter right now, let's change the subject. But Izuku put his hand up in protest and telling Ko with a serious tone, no it's fine he deserves to know, after all he did go through all the trouble to save us. Hikari was more than confused at this point of their conversation. 
wondering why Izuku was so sad and distant while Ko was so protective and looking ready to bite him. Izuku breathed out a ragged breath and answered half-heartedly, You see Hikari Kunai'm. Quirkless. Oh, was Hikari's reply. Oh, oh, that's all you have to say is just oh. Ko shouted at Hikari. Aren't you gonna laugh at him? Call him names, tease him, or use your quirk to push him around like everyone else in the world does. Huh. Hikari back away from the terrifying golden-eyed boy until he tripped and was on his butt crawling away. And no I would never. I'm not like those other people. I would never judge someone based on their quirk or lack thereof. My parents taught me better. Hikari cried out. Ko narrowed his eyes and stated dangerously. You'd better, cause if I find out you're lying just to save your skin I'm gonna show you firsthand what bad luck really feels like. Yes sir. Hikari replied in panic. Then Hikari zoomed past Ko and towards Izuku. Suuuo dot 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 does this mean we're friends now? He asked the other green-haired boy. Friends? Izuku questioned. Yeah friends. You me and Kogo. Hikari replies cheerfully. Don't call me Kogo. Ko argued. Whatever you say Kogo. Ko moaned in response to him. We're friends, but we just meet. Izuku asked getting back on topic. Sure that's true and all, but you two have already called me Hikari-chan and Hikari-kun. And I've already given Kogo his own nickname, Izu-kun. So yeah, we're friends, right? Hikari asked holding out his hand. Izuku looked at him and smiled big he grabbed his hand exclaimed, Yeah, friends, right Ko-san? Izuku asked his other friend. Ko sighed while rubbing his neck then finally gave in saying, Yeah okay friends, and put his hand in the center too. But I have my eye on you Roadrunner. He followed up. Okay then, we're going to be the most awesome hero team ever. Look out world here we come. Izuku cried out for all to hear. Then in his excitement, Hikari grabbed his two new friends and ran full speed around the park dragging them along for the ride and making them extremely dizzy. And how you may ask did Inko react to Izuku's new friend? Well let's just say that first impression really are everything and poor Inko couldn't even get a single feeling from him since it was very hard to get an impression from someone who was basically a sentient green bullet that turned corners, talked way too fast, and ate like a horse. Poor Inko was so overwhelmed at first. A few weeks later, it had been some time since the dynamic trio had become a group, and Izuku was loving every second of it. Having not one but two friends that didn't judge him cause of his quirk was the best thing in the world. It was just like old times with Kachin, only there was no Kachin, which honestly made Izuku a little sad. Nevertheless, Hikari had become close friends with both Izuku and Ko and were thick of thieves. It took Ko a while to warm up to Hikari and his fast-paced personality, though eventually they became closer than ever thanks to Izuku. And also thanks to the hero-loving boy, the two boys found themselves in love with the thought of becoming heroes, becoming a hero team, becoming some of the top heroes, and most of all idolizing All Might. One day Izuku was walking through the park when he heard a noise. He looked for the source and found none other than Kachin and his two cronies cornering another kid on the ground, no doubt being bullied cause of his weaker quirk. He was covered in dirt and begging to cry while curled up into a ball for protection. Instantly Izuku flew over to the boys and stood in the way of his friend and the boy on the ground. With all the courage he could muster he exclaimed as best he could, Stop Kachin. What are you doing? Can't you see you're making him cry? If you don't I'll stop you myself and raised his fists in defense. Oh really? Bakugou asked sarcastically. Well if you're gonna play hero and protect him then who's gonna protect you? Bakugou continued as he punched his fist into an explosion. Deku. Izuku flinched at this and Bakugou's toadies activates their quirks. One sprouted huge red bat wings and the other elongated his finger. Well Deku, who's gonna protect you, huh? Who? Bakugou shouted threateningly. Boo! Came a new voice behind the three boys. The three boys then jumped in fear and screamed from the surprise. The three of them turned around to see the scowling expression of Ko, who then walked past the boys into Izuku's side also protecting the boy. On a side note, today Ko was wearing a pair of golden-colored pants. I'll protect Izuku from you, Ko stated boldly. Ko-san, Izuku stated with relief in his voice with tears pricked his eyes. Oh yeah, you in what quirk goldy pants? Bakugou shouted at him in frustration and embarrassment. I don't need a quirk to beat all of you. I just need a bit of luck. Ko stated while flicking his lucky coin in the air. Izuku giggles at that and Bakugou growled at Izuku thinking he was laughing at him. Hi guys, exclaimed the hyper fast paced voice of Hikari. And there it is now. Ko pointed sarcastically to the electric green boy. Hey I'm glad I found you guys I bought a box of donuts for us to share. Hikari said excitedly while holding up a box with nothing in it. Hikari said there's nothing in that box. Ko stated matter of fact. Yeah I got hungry along the way. Hikari explained guiltily while throwing the box to the side. Hey, Bakugou yelled getting back their attention. Oh hi there I'm. Hikari went to introduce himself in his cheerful way till Bakugou rudely cut him off shouting, shut it fat legs. Hikari's cheerful expression immediately fell from his comment. Deku you nerd, who the hell are these extras? Bakugou demanded towards Izuku. 
Ikari then looked all around them at a fast pace trying to find this Deku person Bakugu was yelling about. He then zoomed to Ko and asked in a not-so-hushed voice, Hey Ko Gohu's Deku, is he the guy on the ground? Ko shrugged and immediately replied, I don't know, and don't call me Ko Go. He was referring to me, I'm Deku. Izuku answered the two boys while looking at the ground. Ko and Hikari looked at one another before Hikari put his hand on Izuku's shoulder and said, I hardly think this is the time to have an identity crisis Izuku. I'm not entirely sure what's happened, but I'm sure we're about to fight those three bullies. No he's right. He is Deku. And that's what he is, Deku. Bakugu yelled at him. Hikari gave him a puzzled look and replied back innocently. No, his name is Izuku Midoriya. And what does Deku even mean? Bakugu grinned wickedly and explained, Deku mean can't do anything or worthless, which fit him perfectly since that's just what he is, a worthless nobody. Izuku sunk even lower into himself hearing those words, while Ko's scowl grew even deeper and Hikari completely lost his innocent and cheerful expression turning into one of anger and frustration. Hikari stamped his feet super fast making a rapid tapping sound as he said angrily, Hey, Izuku is not worthless, he amazing and he can do anything and he's really smart, so he not worthless, not even a little bit. Yeah and he's going to become a great hero, and we'll become heroes with him. He'll be the best hero, the best of the best. He'll be the number one hero and we'll be number two and three. Ko agreed. Izuku looked up from his own shell of self-doubt at his two friends and felt a smile roll onto his face while happy tears rolled down his face. Bakugu on the other hand was completely appalled by this and growled in anger by what they were even spewing out of their mouth holes. How dare they think that a quirkless loser like Deku could even hope to even become even a sidekick let alone the number one hero. Then I guess you extras are just like Deku. And we'll have to teach you a lesson just like Deku on what it means to be a hero. Bakugu growled dangerously. I think you need that lesson more than we do, villain. Ko stated vexingly. Hikari broke out into laughter and all the veins in Bakugu's head immediately bulged out. Enough of this, get those losers. Bakugu shouted as they all charged them. I call dibs on the finger guy. Shouted excitedly. Then I'll get flying diabetes. Ko confirmed cockily. But that mean. Izuku realized fearfully. Then Izuku felt someone's hand in his shoulder. He looked over and saw Ko brining with confidence. It's okay Izuku just remember that you are a hero. Power or no power, costume or no costume. As long as you have true heart you'll always be the best. He reassured his friend. Izuku was stunned by his friend's words and attitude. Who knew that the shivering, messy, reclusive, poverty-stricken kid he met less than a year ago in a rainstorm by an alley would come to talk and think like such a heroic figure. Who taught you that Ko-san? Izuku asked him bewildered. Ko turned his head back to the group of oncoming boys and said, You did Izuku. Me too, cheered Ikari. For the first time in a very long time Izuku felt something he haven't in a while, confidence. And with this spark of confidence bubbling inside of him he would use it to defend himself and the victim as a true hero. Soon the three boys were on the attack ready to beat down on Izuku and his friends. But Izuku and his friends were ready to defend themselves. Ikari immediately zoomed up to the kid with the long fingers causing him to flinch for a moment. Hikari then grabbed the kid's fingers and forcefully extended them to their maximum length, then ran around the boy till his fingers wrapped around his own body. Hikari then took the boy's fingers and tied them in a bow by the front of his body. As a final touch took something from his pocket, licked it then slapped it on the boy's head causing him to fall over. The object that Hikari slapped on his forehead read don't open till Christmas. Ko only stood in place with a cocky grin as the large winger boy flew to him at full speed. Ko flipped his lucky coin a few times before flicking it off his thumb at the boy. It hit his right wing on a nerve that caused the wing to collapse and made the flying boy veer off to the left. He then nosedived and skidded along the ground right into a tree where he crashed hard. When the coin bounced off his wing it recashed right back into his open palm. Ko stood there with a cocky grand on his face the whole time. Izuku didn't fare so well as he took more than a few of Bakugu's explosions to the body. Izuku had his arms up in defense trying his best block the blunt force from his attacks though it didn't help much from the intense heat of his explosions burning his arms. Izuku was almost drawn back into a corner from several more of Bakugu's attacks almost bringing the poor boy to tears. While Bakugu simply laughed at his closing victory, Bakugu let off an explosion that sent him back a few feet to give him time for one last powerful attack. Izuku was brought to his knees in exhaustion. He had no idea what to do. He had been beaten by Bakugu many times before and knew how to counter him properly. But now his mind was blank. Izuku was almost ready to call it quits and let his more stronger friend take down Bakugu. But then Ko's voice entered his mind. It's okay Izuku just remember that you are a hero. Power or no power, costume or no costume. As long as you have true heart you'll always be the best. Ko was right, he was a hero. And he could do this. A true hero had heart, and he more than enough of it. He was the one who taught both of his friends this lesson. And now it was time to listen to his own advice. Izuku rose to his feet in defensive stance ready for Bakugu to attack. 
Bakugou smiles wildly at Izuku's foul attempt to be brave and launched himself at the green-haired child. Izuku waits for the right moment when he's close enough. When Bakugou is right at the point where he would attack, Izuku sidestepped and let the explosions pass by him. Bakugou was shocked that he had actually missed his target for the first time, and Izuku took the moment of hesitation to reel back and sock Bakugou in the face. Though actually it was more of a strong tap on the nose than a punch. However it was enough to make Bakugou fall back on his butt from the shock of being hit by a weakling. Izuku stood there out of breath from the adrenaline until he realized what he did and a huge smile spread on his face. Though it wasn't enough to keep Bakugou down for the count. As the blonde boy slowly rose to his feet in shock and that same shock turned into furry. Bakugou glared his red eyes at Izuku threateningly at Izuku and growled like a cat. Deku, you're dead Deku, dead. And exploded towards the green-haired boy. All of Izuku's muscles tensed for the attack. He reeled back his arm, closed his eyes and let out a war cry as he threw his blind punch. Just then Ko and Hikari were at Izuka's side also throwing their own punches at the blonde boy. Bakugou was shocked to see Izuka's friends at his side in a mere moment and dropped his guard yet again. Though it was more than enough for the three of them to throw a triple punch right into Bakugou's face. Bakugou was thrown back by the sheer force of three people punching him at the same time. Very far back that is. He flew across the playground and skidded across the ground. Then rolled the rest of the way before slamming back first into a tree and sliding to the ground in an unconscious heap. Izuku slowly opened his eyes before realizing his arm was still out. He let it fall then noticed his two friends at his side with their arms extended in punches, both of which had smiled on their faces, Hikari's being larger than Ko's by comparison. Izuku looked around confused then asked, What happened? Hikari looked like he was ready to explode when he screamed out, We won. We won. Izuku questioned. We won. Ko replied more calmly. We did it. We stood up for what was right and we were heroes. Hikari cheered. We did hero stuff. Izuku said to himself with a glazed expression not really able how to process this. Izuku was snapped out of his trance by Ko's hand on his shoulder. Izuku looked to his friend who said, Right Izuku, we did hero stuff, together. Together. Izuku questioned. As a team. Hikari cheered. We're going to be great heroes right Izuku. Ko exclaimed with more enthusiasm as he put his hand out. Izuku looked at his hand then back to his friend where he smiled and replied, Right, we're going to be great heroes, and an even better hero team together, and put his hand in the center. Hikari put his hand in the center and shouted, Look out world and villains alike, cause here we come. The three of them cheered in unison. Hey, a new voice called out to them. The three boys turned in the direction of the voice and saw a police officer with antlers and cloven hooves standing there. I saw what you kids did. You can't use your quicks in public. He shouted at them. They knew that now, no matter the circumstances they were in prior, they were in a whole heap of trouble now. However Hikari had other plans as he immediately zoomed over to the officer and yanked down his pants in one pull. What the heck? The officer shouted in surprise. When the officer took a step he suddenly stepped right on top of Ko's lucky coin causing the officer at the fall straight on his face and the lucky coin to flew right back into Ko's hand. Hikari zoomed back over to his friends then grabbing them on the back of their pants said a quick, bye bye and zoomed out of sight from the office. And that was the start of the three boys solidifying their trio ship and becoming a true team that would last throughout their whole lives, or at least until the end of middle school hit, which is where our story truly began. It had been many years since the three boys had their first act of heroism in the park defeating Bakugou and his two crony, while solidifying their friendship even further. However like all alternate origin stories nothing is as it is. And this one is certainly no different as Izuku soon realizes his true dream and a power that had been sleeping inside of him for many many years. It all started on the very first day of Izuku's last year in middle school. Izuku had forgotten to set his alarm clock and instead had to be woken up by the sound of his overly dramatic mother's voice. Izuku wake up dear, you're gonna be late. Inko called her son from the other side of his door. Inko was about to walk away when she heard a small scream from her son's room. Then a bunch of clattering and banging sounds soon followed. Inko was now very concerned after hearing these noises and knew her son was rushing to get ready. Izuku please, by all means do hurry along but don't hurt yourself. She called behind the door. Suddenly the door swung open causing Inko to jump back a few feet. And in the doorway stood a very disheveled and breathless Izuku in a very messy school uniform. Inko sighed at the sight of her son's current state. Being the mother that she was she began to fix. Straighten out and button up his clothes while straightening out his hair as best as possible. Oh Izuku, she sighed. I don't want you being late on the first day, but also don't want to see you hurt yourself before school has even started. Sorry mom. Izuku sweat dropped breathless. Once Izuku looked halfway decent and Ko told her son to get some food in him while she packed his things. 
Izuku ran off to the kitchen to eat breakfast on the table while Inko grabbed her son's backpack and filled it with everything he needed. Once she double-checked that everything was in there she left it by the front door for Izuku to grab on his way out. Inko had just turned around to see her son run into the hallway to grab his thing and bolt out the door. He threw on his shoes and slung his pack over his back and when he was about to leave he heard his mom say to him, I have everything in your bag including your phone and hero notebook in the front pocket. Thanks mom. Izuku thanked her just as he reached the handle. Oh wait Izuku. Izuku stopped and turned to face his mom. Good luck today sweetie and I love you. Izuku smiled and replied, I love you too mom. Izuku sighed as he looked at the door and said, I sure hope they're not mad about me being late. Izuku opened the door expecting to see his ride sitting outside waiting impatiently but instead saw an empty street with no one there. Inko looked at the hall clock and commented, Well that's strange, normally they're here already. I wonder if they got held up. Suddenly a green flash came into view and immediately stopped at the front gate of the house. The green flash was none other than the speed demon himself, Hikari Sokuto, carrying the luckiest man alive, Kuna Kinnan, on his back. Since they were children the two boys had changed drastically over the coming years. Hikari had shot up like a weed, in fact he was over 6'4". He had grown tall thin and wide, at least at the shoulders. He still kept his short blown back electric green hairstyle and still kept all his energy since age 5. In fact he might have actually gained even more since then. As such he still moved and talked 10 miles a minute, and had a hyperactive personality with zero filter. In addition his legs gained even more muscle mass and yes that includes his thighs that were just as bulgy since age 5. Ko on the other hand still stayed at a healthy body type, though gained some natural muscle from doing absolutely nothing. He grew some inches though only about 3 inches taller than Izuku. Another thing that changed was his hairstyle and color. Normally having long black messy hair that touched his neck in the past, now he sported a fohawk with shaved sides and back with the longer hair on top slicked up like a mohawk and dyed blonde. The one thing that didn't change was his sense of wardrobe. Being he still wore one golden piece of clothing all the time, today he wore golden shoes. Another big thing that did change on Ko was his personality. In the beginning Ko was a very shy, quiet, and reclusive child. Though when he discovered his amazing quirk he gained a more cocky and self-confident personality with a hint of snootiness in the mix. Though just enough to have a bit of charm to it rather than like Bakugou's overinflated, self-centered, selfish, ego. In truth he was much more loyal and protective over the people he cared about, which is so few to start with. While poor Izuku on the other hand didn't get much taller than either of his friends and was still extremely scrawny for a 14-year-old. Not even his messy copious amounts of hair had changed, though his love for heroes and becoming one was still stronger than ever. Anyway back to the story. Beep beep. Hikari beeped like the roadrunner. Hey Izuku. Ko called out while munching a donut. Izuku ran up to his friends and noticed a box of donuts in Hikari's hands. He looked up to his friends and stated, You guys are late today. Yeah sorry about that. Someone forgot to eat his 10,000 calorie breakfast this morning so we had to stop at a donut shop quickly to refuel. Ko motioned to the person carrying him. Hikari got an insulted expression as he remarked back. First off I eat a 20,000 calorie breakfast and you know it. Second, we wouldn't have needed to stop if someone hadn't forgotten to wake me up at the appropriate time as they were bumming around my place, again. Hey you offered. Ko shot back calmly. Guys enough. Izuku shouted to stop his friends from arguing. Look it's fine that you were late today anyway. I too was running behind a bit. Ko shot a smug grin at a frowning Hikari who said cockley. And you said he would have been waiting long. Thanks to me it looks like we got. Lucky, Izuku and Hikari said the last part of his sentence in unison. We get it dude. Hikari deadpanned. Speaking of getting things, we got you three donuts Izuku. Ko stated. Actually I ate two of them. Hikari replied awkwardly. We got you a donut Izuku. Ko corrected himself. Izuku took the plain glazed donut from the box and took a bit from it while saying thanks with a full mouth. Hi boys. And Ko called out to the two teens. Hi auntie and Ko. They both replied back in unison. Looking large, Ikari commented which earned him a slap on the back of his head by the co. Though, he complained. It was a compliment. Some men like larger women. He argued, though only got another slap on his head. Ko glared and scolded him saying firmly. And some women like their men to keep their comments to themselves. Whatever. Ikari moaned under his breath. They're ready to go Izuku. He asked the green teen. Izuku polished off his donut and nodded his head. Cool, then assume position. He commanded him. Izuku then jumped into Hikari's arms and wrapped his arms around his neck and legs around his torso like a baby koala. Ko was doing the same exact thing only on his back. The objective wasn't to be comfortable on the ride. The idea was just to hold on. Why do I always have to be the baby koala? Izuku complained as Hikari adjusted his arms under Izuku's butt. Until you gain more weight than Kogo, you'll be riding koala style till then. Hikari explains. Ko chuckles a bit and adds in. I don't think that'll ever happen. 
and don't call me Kogo. He yells into Hikari's ear. Bye boys have a safe day. And Ko calls out to the three teens. Bye auntie, mom, we will. They called back as Ikari zooms off in a flash of green. Moments later the boys found themselves in the all too familiar feeling of going at half the speed of sound though downtown Japan. Everything going by like a video set on fast forward at full speed. Though certain things around them seemed to go at normal speed thanks to a trick of the eyes. And the two riders were for the most part enjoying the sights before them. No matter how many times they saw it, it was a spectacle that truly would never get old. That is until something caught Izuku's attention. That being a giant stomping through a far off part of town. Izuku knew that this had to be some kind of villain attack. And where there was a villain there would be heroes. Even if they were running a bit behind schedule. Izuku wanted so badly to see which heroes would be at the scene and his writing hand was already itching uncontrollably. There's a villain attack going on over there. Can we stop quick? Izuku shouted over the whipping winds. Ko managed to hear what Izuku said. That and the fact he saw the giant and tapped Hikari on his green head. Hey, stop over there for a second. They're a villain attack and Izuku wants to see some hero action. He yelled as loud as he could over the whipping wind. What? Ikari yelled back. Ko rolled his eyes and simply grabbed a handful of Ikari's electric green hair and yanked back as hard as he could. The speed teen immediately came to a screeching halt from his hair being yanked on like the bit on a horse bridle. Oh stop that. And not some horse you know. Ikari complained. No but you sure eat like one. Ko shot back. Anyway speed over to the giant over there. No doubt heroes will be on the scene soon and I don't want to miss the full action. Ko pointed to the giant pig-like villain with black dreadlocks. Whoa there's a giant over there. Are you seeing this guys? Ikari exclaimed now finally noticing the huge villain. Just go. Ko shouted. And Ikari was off like a bolt of lightning. Meanwhile at the crime scene the giant villain was more or less escaping with ease from his pursuers of the police force. However he was forced to halt in his tracks when he came face to face with the pro hero known as Kamu Woods. Stop right there villainy scum. And surrender peacefully. Kamu commanded towards the villain. While on the ground a green flash came into a huge crowd of bystanders trying to get a peek of the crime scene action about to unfold. Ikari let his two friends down from his body and they all slipped as far into the mob as they could to get a front row seat of the heroes in action. Izuku turned to one of the bystanders and asked him, what going on here? The man didn't look towards Izuku and kept his focus on the action as he replied. That huge guy tried to snag a purse, but when the cops cornered him he went huge and started to cause a real racket. While back with the villain and the hero, Camu Woods was swinging from building to building, post to post, beam to beam, dodging every one of the giant villain's attacks that tried to crush him under his enormity. Even though he was faster he sure didn't hit any harder. Camu Woods' attacks did little to nothing against the villain's huge and durable body. The villain though he finally had Camu on the ropes when he came to a building where there was nothing else to attach on. The villain raised his arms in the air to crush Camu but missed again as Camu found a nearby crane to grapple onto in the nick of time. He wasn't called a pro hero for nothing. Kamui swung himself up in the air and went airborne. As he ascended he created a huge shield of branches to block the villain's other incoming attack attack in the hopes of causing him to fall from his incoming speed. Hey doesn't he kinda remind you about that other giant we know? Ko questioned. Who? Izuku questioned back. You know that giant guy from Hikari San's old school. The one we meet before meeting Green Lightning here. Ko explained while motioned to the electric green teen. Oh you mean Kyojin Kyojin. Ikari exclaimed, now that you mention it he does seem like him, except this guy is way prettier by comparison. Ikari stated sarcastically, back at the fight, the giant villain's stamina was finally starting to give out, though he still wasn't going down without a fight. Kamui landed on a rooftop and in an almost stoic and philosophical manner stated a small heroic type speech, theft, assault on both a hero and law enforcement, endangerment of civilians, damage of private and government property, and use of a quirk in public without a hero license. You are a danger to all those around you and a true villain, for that I can't let you escape. Lacquered Chain's prison. Kamui shouts as a whole heap of wood sprouts from his arm that swiftly began to immobilize the giant villain. Hikara's eyes grew big and sparkle at this sight while he literally begins to vibrate. Ko stands there with an impressed grin spread across his face. While Izuku stands there the same as Hacker only he's also simultaneously muttering and taking down notes. Suddenly a new voice pierced through the crowds going crazy at Kamui Wood's success. And it roared in a female voice, Canyon Cannon. Then something crashed right into the giant villain knocking him clean out of consciousness and from Kamui's grip. The giant fell to the earth with a large thud leaving behind a cloud of dust and an entire shock audience and Kamui Woods left speechless. 
The befaller of the giant was a voluptuous young woman with blonde hair that was curled into two ringlets at the front and purple eyes, a skin-tight bodysuit with a mix of cream, purple, and orange, with two purple horns at the top of her purple mask. She too was as big, if not bigger than the giant villain, she fell to the ground superhero style. Just then an entire group of paparatis came from all different directions practically trapping the three boys on the ground. Money shot, money shot, money shot, money shot. They all chanted like a cult as they took dozens of picture of this new hero. Have no fear fair citizens. This villain won't cause you any more trouble. The giantess spoke as she went over to the downed villain to scrape him up. As she grabbed one of his arms she seductively bent over while saying, And it my big debut. I'm Mount Lady, pleasure to meet your ass acquaintance. Mount Lady introduced herself with a wink. I did not see that coming. Ko stated in shock. I'm sure glad I did. Hakiri exclaimed excitedly. I don't know about you guys but I'd sure like to climb her mountain top. He exclaimed while starting to drool. Ko simply groaned and face palmed at his antics, while Izuku simple ignored him while taking notes on the new heroine excitedly. Then again I sure would like to ride Kamui's woo. Hikari began exclaimed while drooling more and biting his lip until Ko slapped his hand over his mouth emphasizing, We get it dude. Sheesh. Ko signed and suggested to his friends. This has been great and all, but we should really get going to school before it starts. So you ready Izuku? Izuku. Though Ko didn't get an immediate response like he normally does so that can only mean one thing. Ko looks over and see his green-haired hero fanboy writing and muttering like pure fire in his notebook. Ko sweat dropped at this knowing that when Izuku gets like this he will unintentionally block out any and all outside distraction. Ko taped Hikara's shoulder, who was still ogling at Mount Lady's posterior, and pointed his thumb at the muttering teen. Hikari knew what to do and simply nodded at the golden-eyed teen while giving a thumbs up. He walked over to Izuku, who was still writing so fast smoke was coming off his paper, placed his hands at the sides of his rib cage, and furiously began to vibrate both hands causing Izuku shake along with him. This caused Izuku to finally snap out of his trance and look around like he finally came back to reality. He looked at Hikari with a questioned look and the electric green teen said, Kogo asked if you were ready to go. Meanwhile Ko muttered angrily under his breath, Don't call me Kogo, Speedy Gonzagas. Yeah just give me a few more seconds. Izuku replied as he jotted down a few more notes. When he finished he turned back to his friends exclaiming, Okay done. Then hop on Izukun. Hikari offered while opening his arms. Izuku hopped into his arms while Hikari turns to Ko with his usual overexcited smile and asks, Ready to go Kogo? Yeah I'm ready. He replies calmly, And don't call me Kogo. He shouts at him. Hikari giggles as Ko hops on Hikari's back. Ko then looked at the giggling electric green-haired boy and rolling his eyes exclaims annoyed, just beat feet roadrunner. Beep beep. Ikari beeps like the cartoon bird and zooms off from the crime scene in a trail of green with the other teen clinging to his body. Minutes later at the school. See Izuku I told you we would've gotten here. We still got 10 minutes to spare. And you were worried we were gonna be late. Ikari gloated at Izuku while he dropped the two teens off his body at the front door of the building. Later at the near end of the school day. It was nearing the end of classes for the first day of school and Izuku had managed to make it through with no trouble from any other kids or catching. Well that and the fact that he stuck to the side of his two friends all day who had their own reputations in the school. Everyone in their class was having idle chatter with one another as the teacher was out getting paperwork, with the only exceptions being Bakugu, Izuku, Ko, and Hikari. After a bit the teacher finally walked into the room saying frimly, All right everyone, settle down I have an important announcement to make. Everyone went quiet after a few seconds as the teacher adjusted the papers he was holding. Now then as you all know this is your last year of middle school, and as such you have to start thinking about where you want to go to high school for your career. Now I could just give you all these tests that will show what career path you would be most likely to choose. The teacher explained while turning away from the class. He then threw the paper behind his shoulder while smiling. But I'm sure you'll all want to get into the hero course at UA, am I right? Then the whole class exploded into cheers of joy as everyone showed off their different quirks, all except for the aforementioned students who were doing other things at the moment. Izuku was writing down more notes in his hero analyzed notebook, Bakugu was relaxing with his head back and his feet in his desk, Hikari was taking a nap with his head back and a large snot bubble coming from his nose, and Ko was simply flipping his lucky coin in the air while listening to everything the teacher was saying. He rolled his eyes and mentally groaned to himself as he said, If you already knew that then why'd you go and waste paper making the stinking tests in the first place? And now you're gonna make one of us clean it up. The teacher waved his hand to make everyone stop as he said, Now now everyone you know the rules of quirk use in school, and wake up Mr. Sokuto. He shouts at Akari. Akari doesn't even stir in his peaceful sleep and continue to smile and gently snore. Ko sighs and in a firm voice shouts, Hey Roadrunner, and flicks his coin behind him which hits square in his forehead. 
Ikari's snout bubble pops and the tall green boy wakes up with a start. Hiwa, is it humiliate Katsuki Day already? He asks half awake. No stupid that's on the 16th. Sensei is giving out career aptitude tests. Ko explains. Ikari yawns and rubs his eyes before saying. Why bother we're all going to try for the hero course in UA. Don't lump me in with these bunch of extras sensei. The only one in this school who's gonna get into UA is gonna be me. Bakugu finally got up from his relaxed position while pointing to himself smugly. Then all the students broke into multiple insults and shouts of distant in at the blonde teen. Oh shut up you extras. Bakugu yelled at all of them. I aced the mock exam so I'm a show in for a spot in UA. I'm gonna be the number one hero who surpasses All Might and become the most famous and richest hero there is. He boasted to everyone. The whole class was completely silent at his self-centered egotistical speech for a solid 10 seconds. Some people were glaring at him while others mentally cursing him or growling under their breaths aggravatedly. The only person to reply after this scene was Ko who simply stated bored, yawn. Then whole whole class lost their minds laughing so hard at that one word. Bakugu growled at everyone and firmly shouted at them to shut the hell up or die. Ah that reminds me. The teacher suddenly spoke up causing everyone's attention to draw back to him. Midoriya, you also applied for UA didn't you? The whole room stood still as if time itself stopped to do a double take. No one said a word or barely moved an inch. Izuku was so shocked he jolted in his seat at the question. He looked up from his spot and saw every pair of eyes in the room all locked onto him. Then the oh so obvious happened and everyone in the class began to laugh uncontrollably. Some people called him out for being an idiot, a lame that a quirkless guy could never hope to be a hero. Izuku sunk only deeper into his seat wishing he could disappear or everyone would just stop. Luckily the last thing did happen in the form of his close friend Hikari, who slammed his foot against the top of his desk while shouting, Hey! The whole room went dead silent and all eyes turned to the electric green teen with the stern and aggravated expression streaming across his face. The next person to so much as giggle will find themselves but naked in the middle of downtown. He shouted at full force, and everyone headed his words to the letter. Not one person dared to giggles, burp, cough or even breath too loud, since they heard and seen from experience that Akari could and would do just as he said. He was fast enough to not get caught doing it as well, and he always held his word to a T. Many instances showed up on the news of random people or students finding themselves in completely humiliating or degrading situation, and in the middle of public on top of it all. However in every asylum full of mad people there was always one who made all the others look sane. And that one person just so happens to be Katsuki Bakugo, who shot up from his desk hands crackling with small explosions with the expression of a thousand furious flaming horses burning in his eyes. He burst over to Izuku's desk and grabbing the poor teen by his shirt collar and bringing him only inches from his face. What the hell shitty nerd? He growled in his face. You think a quirkless loser like you can even hope to enter UA? W well I I mean T there's no harm in T trying, right? Izuku nervously sputtered out. Get that shit of of your head. Cause you're not getting into UA, ever. I'll blow you to hell if you even try shitty Deku. Bakugu screamed at his face as more sparks exploded in his hand. Katsuki, a deadly cold voice called Bakugu's name. Everyone could feel the intensity already fill the room from that one voice. No one spoke apart from the sound of Ko flipping his lucky coin up and down. Bakugu whipped his head over to the golden-eyed teen whose same eyes were glaring daggers at the blonde teen and his expression was still and unmoving like ice. He flipped his coin one last time and caught it perfectly before saying in a deadly calm voice, Let go of Izuku, now. There was no bite, malice, or venom in his sentence, but you could feel the firmness and strictness in every word he spoke. Bakugu threw Izuku back into his seat roughly and exploding over to the golden-eyed teen's seat, sent two small explosions on his desk as he yelled only inches from his face, Don't fucking tell me what to do, Goldie Pants. Katsuki. He referred to him again in the same calm tone as he flipped his coin again. Do you remember which orifice my lucky coin found its way into you last week? He asked the explosive blonde. Bakugu paled, yet only for a moment, and put a hand up to his throat while unconsciously gulping. He remembered quite well when last week Ko shot his lucky coin into Bakugu's mouth causing him to choke and turn blue from suffocation. So I'll make this very clear for you. Lash out against Izuku again. And my lucky coin will find a new orifice to get launched into. And sure it may take me a while to retrieve and I'll have to soak it in bleach for a few days. But a shit-covered coin is far better than the gut-wrenching pain of impaction. Ko spoke again in his deadly calm voice. Bakugu huffed at him then turned around back to his seat as he groaned in a low tone, Don't tell me what to fucking do. Just as Bakugu sat back down in his seat the teacher gave them a few more announcements before the bell rang ending school. Everyone almost immediately beat feet out the door except for a few people who lingered behind including the teacher. Izuku had just finished putting the finishing touches on his newest hero analysis and was smiling bright and happily as ever. That is until a certain explosive blonde grabbed the notebook from Izuka's hands, blasted it, 
and then threw it out the window causing Izuku to scream in panic. Hikari tried to use his quirks to catch the book before it flew out the window, but the teacher chewed him out in a strict tone half shouting, no quirk use in school. This stopped Hikari just long enough for the notebook to fly out the window and into the koi fish pond. Katsuki used his quirk first. Hikari argued back. I didn't see it. The teacher replied. Favoritism. Hikari accused him. What was that? The teacher asked rhetorically. I said. Hikari began to say until the teacher cut him off. You give me one more word of back talk young man and I'll give you detention till graduation. Hikari's faces twisted into pure rage then loosened enough before turning into a grim smile. He looked at the teacher and said, You're right sir, and I'm sorry for the back talk. The teacher smiled at this. Hikari then zoomed up to the teacher placing a firm grip on his shoulder with a smile that did not show any form of friendliness. So why don't I make up for it with some equal repayment to you? The teacher felt a cold chill run up his spine at these words and Hikari's grip tightened. He knew something was afoot yet he was too late to escape it. He suddenly felt as if he was in a rocket or shot out from a gun. With a great amount of pressure and speed exerted on his back suddenly. Then it stopped just as quickly as it came. The first thing the teacher saw was Hikari's smiling face as he said cheerfully, Have a nice day, and vanished in a stream of green. Two things immediately stuck out to the teacher once he looked around to where he was. First thing he noticed was he was in the middle of town, down down to be precise. Second thing that he noticed was that everyone one he looked at was full on laughing or giggling at the sight of him. He turned to the nearest person, who was a businesswoman, and asked, Hey what's got everyone tickled pink? The woman tried to stifle her laughter and taking a breath to steady herself replied, It's your wardrobe or rather lack thereof. The teacher was confused for a moment before looking down and realizing that he had no clothes on besides his socks and underwear. He immediately covered himself as best he could and screamed in embarrassment. Back at the school Hikari arrived back in the classroom only seconds after he left with the teacher in tow slapping his hands clean with a satisfied expression stretching across his face. Izuku was sitting down in his seat looking down at himself in shock of what just happened while Ko had his hands on his shoulder while glaring at Bakugu who had grabbed his belongings to leave. Hikari zoomed over to Izuku to also try to make him feel better about what happened. Bakugu began to leave with his two cronies in tow. Just before he left the room he stopped and looked over his shoulder at Izuku. Like I said to you before nerd, a quirkless loser like you can't ever hope to become a hero. So just give the hell up already. He said with malicious while his cronies snicked. Ko and Hikari tightened their hands into fists ready to give Bakugu and his cronies an all-out pummeling. However Izuku suddenly shot up from his seat. Shoulders tense, nostrils flaring, and fists tight. This caused even Ko and Hikari to stand back in shock of their green-haired friend's sudden outburst. Bakugo only looked on with a questioning look on his face. Izuku had a determined expression on his face as he stared down Bakugo, which caused him to retaliate shouting, Well, if you have something to say nerd, then spit it the hell out. As fast as Izuku's newfound determination and vigor came it also dissipated just as easily. Izuku tried to say something yet his young twisted and his shoulders slumped down eye defeat. Bakugo smiled at this knowing he was still top dog until Ko placed his hand on Izuku's shoulder. Don't back down now. You got this, let him know what you think. And just remember you're a hero and the two of us always have your back. Ko whispered in Izuku's ear. And Hikari also gave a thumbs up. Izuku smiled at his friends then closed his eyes, took a deep breath, collected his thoughts, and gave Bakugo a piece of his mind. Why you're a jerk catching? If you think that I can't get into the hero course for being quirkless then neither will you. With your attitude you'll never be a hero. You'll be nothing but a thug in a costume. So if your goal is just to be loud and blast people cause you feel like it then go find Mabataki or Dosai. They could always use another meathead. Bakugu's cronies were speechless. Ko was speechless and covering his mouth. Akari was speechless and barely containing his laughter. Izuku was standing there breathless. And above all for once Bakugu was left speechless. It took Bakugu a good 30 seconds before he actually did anything other than stand in place with a shocked expression spreading across his face. In all his years of knowing Izuku he never once ever known him to stand up for himself or even show any kind of backbone. To see the usually kind and pushover green-haired boy raise his voice was a true shell shocker. Bakugu finally regained his personality and narrowed his eyes, ground his teeth and growled low. Izuku saw this and tensed up while putting on his normal scared, nervous expression. Bakugu saw this and smiled like an ass at his retreation as he said, Tesk, I should have known that you were all talk and no game. Once a Deku, always a Deku. And just to rub it in even more he turned around and said smugly, Oh and if you really want to be a hero so badly then pray for one in your next life, and take a swan dive off the roof. That was it. That was the Kurdegra, the top point, the snowflake that caused an avalanche, the straw that broke the camel's back, the one thing that really set everything and everyone off. Izuku was shocked and shaken by Bakugu's words. Bakugu was smiling a shit-eating grin at Izuku's expression. Bakugu's cronies were snickering at his remark. 
Ko was left loose jawed, and Hikari dot 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 oh he was something else entirely. He was absolutely writhing, fuming, sheathing, however you want to describe it with anger. His normal chipper attitude and expression was replaced by a now prominent layer of uncontained furry. His veins were bulging, his fists were held so tight small trickles of blood were seen. His teeth and lips were in such a tight state that it looked like they were ready to snap away from his face. His pencil-thin eyebrows forward so far down and so close together they looked like one unibrow that would fly off, and the most prominent thing was his eyes and body. His normal electric green eyes had completely engulfed them turning them into two orbs of electric green color, and his body surged all over with a bioelectricity that was the same color as his eyes. The crackling sound he produced was enough to draw back Yugen attention for just a moment. And a moment was all that passed when Hikari suddenly disappeared from sight. Bakugu was about to look around for the tall electric green teen when he felt someone in front of him forcefully grab his shoulder. He whipped his head in front to see the hateful, fully enveloped, electric green eyes of Hikari staring right at him. Bakugu didn't have the chance to speak when Hikari said in a voice that crackled like lightning, Why don't you go first? Then Bakugu felt the very familiar feeling of being pulled very quickly by someone with super speed only this time it felt much much stronger and even quicker. For a brief moment Bakugu feared he would get serious whiplash when he stopped, though he quickly realized that would be the least of his worries. As he just felt his body stop he took notice that he felt weightless. He looked, since his head was pushed down from the pressure, and saw that he was actually dangling off the school's roof only being held up by Hikari's long eclectically charged arm. He didn't even get the chance to react when Hikari said, see you in the next life, dropped him and disappeared. Hikari zoomed right back in the room as quickly as he left with his eyes no longer looking like green orbs and no more bioelectricity coursing around him with a satisfied expression. Without missing a beat Ko asked, where's Blast and Nut? Though he got his answer quickly after hearing Bakugu's scream and a few explosions being sent off outside the window. Everyone who was still in the room dashed towards the window and saw a very shaken, sweaty, and angry Bakugu dry heaving in his knees on a very scorched pavement. Bakugu dry heaved a few times then ground his teeth angrily before looking up at a very smug Hikari and yelling, You fat-legged bastard. You threw me off the roof. Izuku gasped and freaked out shouting at Hikari in utter shock. You threw Kachin off the roof. Ko was taking this a different way with his hand gripping his lower lip while trying to withhold his laughter while saying, Holy shit Zumi. Hikari simply closed his eyes while holding up a peace sign and sticking his tongue out childishly. Izuku, who wasn't amused by this, continued to scold him shouting, How could you do that? Hikari put his hands up defensively while saying, Calm down Izukun. Besides he started it. And do you really think I would throw or kick someone off a roof without knowing that they would find a way land safely? Izuku was about to argue with him but was taken back immediately. Since he knew that even though Hikari may act like an idiot at times he certainly still had common sense. Then Ko added something else onto Hikari's statement. Well I think that's the problem. He stated while flipping his coin. He landed without so much as a scratch so he didn't learn anything. Fear is a good tool to use but at most effective with a dash of pain. Ko then flicked his coin off his thumb and hit a tree Bakugu was near. A loose limb fell and hit Bakugu right on his head. Ko's coin bounced off the tree and right back into his hand. And now that's better. He stated with a smile. Bakugu shot to his feet and pointing at the three boys shouted, I'm gonna get you nerds tomorrow. Just you wait. Izuku freaked out Hikari put up his fist saying fast. Oh please you'll never catch me. I have a feeling that luck will be on my side. Ko replied smugly. Bakugu growled turned tail and stomped away. Bakugu's two cronies then looked at the group wondering if they should have hanged their leader. They soon decided to hightail it when Hikari turned to them and said in a dangerous voice, Oh don't worry boys, you'll be joining him real soon. And that's when they dashed for the exit calling for Bakugu to wait for them. After school the three friends were walking on the street next to one another. Not riding Hikari back to their homes just walking seeing Izuku's expression. As Izuku walked with them at a slow pace he looked down at his fish nibbled, soaking wet, burnt hero notebook. Hikari tried to help and asked, Why the long face Izu pony? Is it your notebook? Don't worry I'll fix it up in a jiffy. He then grabbed the notebook and was about to shake it dry when Ko snagged it from him while scolding him firmly, Are you crazy? You'll reduce it to wet tissue paper you loon. Sometimes in life you need to take things slowly. What is slow? The electric green teen asked. Ko sweat dropped and replied. Why am I not surprised that word isn't in your vocabulary? No, Izuku said softly. This was enough to get his friend's attention as they looked at him questioningly. It's fine, you can do that. It's practically nothing but tissue paper at this point. This made the other two boys falter and unable to speak at what their normally opportunistic friend just said. Ko was the only one able to speak as he stammered. No 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 Izuku, we can fix this. It'll just take a little time is all. But Izuku didn't reply he didn't make any sign of reaction, he simply kept on walking. 
Ko and Hikari were already bummed out by how their friend was acting. Seeing him like this almost made them feel defeated. They truly thought that after humiliating Bakugo for the umpteenth time he would be alright for the most part, though they never knew their friend would be so deeply affected by his words. True they always tried their best to help him through it. But even after being away from Bakugu for the whole summer break they thought it would help Izuku heal, even a little bit. Instead it just kept those feelings dulled until Bakugu sharpened them again. Hikari, being a fast think due to his quirk, came up with an idea and zoomed in front of Izuku's path. The smaller green-haired teen looked up at his tall friend who suggested with a bright smile on his face. Hey I know what we can do to cheer you up. How about we go to that pizzeria not too far from here, or maybe for some ice cream, or even to that new America place that just opened. With every he suggested his mouth watered even more. Ko punched the speedy teen in the ribs causing him to snap out of his food fantasy, and cough a very audible ahem. Hikari sweat dropped knowing that he should suggest things Izuku likes and not him. He then tried to save himself by suggesting, Oh oh or how about W we go to the museum? Yeah, I heard they have an All Might exhibit. No thanks, Izuku replied in a deadpan tone while walking around the tall teen. Izuku, he called out in a light tone though couldn't bring himself to say anything else. Hikari sighed and turning to Ko said, not even for All Might. He questioned it like it was completely crazy, seeing him so bummed out is making me bummed out. I don't even feel like running. Now that's a lot coming from you, Ko said with all sincerity and no sarcasm. You've known him longer than me and you're always lucky. Maybe you can cheer him up, Hikari asked hopefully. Ko looked at Izuku then his coin which landed on tails. He looked back at Izuku and speaking to Hikari said, I don't think I'll be any more help. I think today my luck has just run out. Not so lucky lucky me. He stated with self-disappointment. Hikari sighed sadly and said, I was afraid you were gonna say that. Sorry, Ko replied softly. The best we can do for him right now is just to be there for him. Hikari nodded and the two boys caught up with their friend. The three teens walked along the street in utter suffocating silence through the usual path they always took. Though usually it was when they were riding on Hikari. They then walked under the same bridge they passed under a hundred times before. Only this time it was different, as the three teens heard a very distinctive rumbling noise coming from around them. Ko turned to Hikari with a look of aggravation and distant in as he exclaimed, Dude if you're that hungry then go get something to eat and meet up with us later. Hikari looked around rapidly then turned back to the golden-eyed teen and replied puzzled, That wasn't me. Before Ko could even say what the manhole cover suddenly exploded from the ground and out exploded a giant pile of dark green slim with a mouth and eyes that cried in a live joy at Izuku. Finally, a new meat sack. The slime thing then launched itself at Izuku with blinding speed and enveloped the other two teen pushing them away from their green-haired friend. Ko felt himself get pushed against the wall with such a great force it nearly knocked him out. Ko was now pushed against the wall by his back by the same thing yet not enveloped. His head was free so he could still somewhat see in breath. However he soon wishes he wasn't able to see his surroundings as he witnessed the horrifying scene firsthand of the slim thing forcing itself down Izuku's throat. Ko was so shocked and horrified at the same time he couldn't call out to Izuku in desperation until he heard Hikari's voice calling out to him. Ko, are you there? Can you hear me? Hikari cried out. Ko snapped out of his trance and thinking fast called out to Hikari. I'm fine I'm just pressed up against the wall so don't worry about me. Worry about Izuku. This slime thing is trying to go into his body and use him like a meat puppet. Vibrate your partial and get him out of here, I'll be fine. He instructed. The sound of Hikari struggling was heard very clearly for a few moments until Hikari called out in panic. I can't. I can only vibrate my paraticles through solid objects. And this thing is a pseudo-liquid. Ko looked at the pain and fear-filled expression of his friend. It was the only thing that he could he couldn't move. Hikari could move. The only thing he could do was watch on in horror and calling out to him in desperation. Izuku, Ko cried. Izukan, Hikari cried. Ha 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 ha. The slime thing laughed cynically. Now just relax and this will be all over before you know it. It instructed him. Izuku couldn't breath. He felt cold, weak, stiff, helpless. He could move his tears pricked his eyes. He saw his entire life flash before his eyes and all the things he had done and all the thing he wished could have done. Is this it? Is this how this all end for me? It hurts. I feel cold. I want it to end. No no I can't let it end like this. I don't want to. Mom, Ko, Hikari, I have to live for them. I want to live for them. I want to be a hero. I want to be the number one hero. As Izuku cried these words in his mind a small spark ignited inside Izuku's being. A spark that hasn't been lit for man many years. And now that it was sparked it was kindled by Izuku's desire to live. It longed for more life, just to live just like Izuku. And it burst into a mighty flame that burned hot in Izuku's soul and out through his body. On the outside world tiny flames ignited and appeared on Izuku's hair tips and shoulders drawing the slime thing's attention long enough for him to wonder what was going on. It was also more than enough time for the figure looming under the sewer chasing the slime thing. 
Blue eyes glittered in the dark as huge figure burst from the hole with a booming voice that called out, There you are villain scum I finally caught you. The slim thing started to profusely sweat and quickly turned around only to let out a scream of pure fright as he screamed in panic, Shit, how'd you find me so fast? A huge figure related back his arm and cried out in his booming voice, Detroit Smash. Suddenly a huge and powerful air current swept through the whole tunnel. It was so powerful that the slime thing was blow apart into jelly and the three teens along with it. In addition it knocked Izuku out the flames on Izuku's body, out of the slim thing's grip, and knocked out cold in the process. Izuku felt his whole world turn black. After a while Izuku felt someone gently yet rapidly slapping his face to get him to wake up while saying something he couldn't hear. He cracked his eyes open and saw a huge figure looming over him. When his eyes adjusted to the light and his ears started working again he heard the figure say, Ah, thank goodness you're alright. Thought I lost you there for a brief moment. Izuku's eyes struggled to adjust and when they did he finally gazed upon the face of his savior. And when he did his body fours in a stiff position and his jaw dropped in awe. Just as Izuku was having a freak out Akari and Ko finally came to. With Ko just realizing what was going on through his blurred vision and barely audible hearing. Ko sat up and got the duo's attention with a very loud and sarcastic ahem. For your information we're okay to and no. He exclaimed with deep sarcasm. Nice of you to check up on us mister. But Ko never finished that sentence as he stopped himself seeing who it actually was that saved them. Akari finally came to and when he saw the person as well he immediately started to scream. Oh might. Izuku and Ko both exclaimed in unison. Ikari continued to scream at the sight of their collective idol. However his expression slowly changed from that of shock to pure euphoria. He immediately zoomed over to the number one hero from his sitting position zooming around the huge blonde man talking at the speed of sound. All Might was a little overwhelmed by how fast he was speaking and couldn't make heads or tails if he was even speaking remote Japanese at this point. Ko managed to assess the situation by slowly walking up to the group then helping Izek to his feet and stopping Hikari by booping him on the nose. Hikari stopped mid-motion like a really fast video set on pause. All Might was visibly surprised, impressed, and disturbed at the same time by this and asked, that actually works. Ko waved it off while not taking his eyes off the man as he said, Yeah yeah, but that's not important. You're here. Actually here in front of us. And you saved us. Thank you. Why yes. T thank you V very very much FF for saving us. Izuku stuttered out his thanks with a bow. Hikari was still standing there but staring at All Might with stars in his eyes and making a sound like an oiled car brakes. Suddenly Izuku remembered that this could be his one and only chance to get an autograph from All Might in the flesh. Izuku quickly looked for his notebook and found his backpack to the side. He dashed over to it and ripped out. Ko and Hikari saw this and also fumbled around in their bags for any piece of paper or a notebook. In a moment they both found a notebook and were almost ready to ask All Might sign when the tall man suddenly told them. While you three were out I figured you'd want an autograph from me so I took the liberty of writing it down in those notebooks of yours. The boys paused for a moment then flipped to the last page and saw All Might's huge signature written in English on two whole pages. Ko tried to convey a thank to All Might. However the usually calm and collectively scaractic teen was now tripping over his words they to make anything other than noises. Hikir was not taking this any more elegantly, in fact he was worse, he was actually hyperventilating rapidly. Izuku was by far the most collective one, sure he let out a loud fanboy scream at the sight of the autograph, but he composed himself and began to bow rapidly. Thank you so very 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 much Mr. All Might sir, I'll treasure this forever. This will be my family's more treasured heirloom. Izuku thanked and praised the man while bowing. All Might raised his head and chest high in the air as he laughed wholeheartedly. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. You're very welcome young man. Suddenly something dawned on Ko as he snapped out of his stuttering mess and in a serious tone asked All Might, where's the slime thing? All Might put their minds at ease as he held up a bottle of soda like he was standing as a spokesperson to commercialize it with the slim thing and its eye floating in the bottle. How he managed to get its huge eyes and said bottle is beyond me. Izuku looked on in awe while Hikari was the only softly said he was going to buy that soda. Ko on the other hand simply walked up to All Might calmly with his hand out open asking to see the bottle. All Might made an inquisitive expression but placed the bottle in the teen hands. Ko then grabbed the bottle with both hands and began to violently shake it while yelling, You like that? Huh. Huh. This is what you get. This is what you get for trying to kill my friend you bastard. All Might tried to deke squat the situation by trying to calm down the Furio's teen. However it was Hikari who stopped him when he snatched the bottle from his hand. He waved his finger disapprovingly at his friend while saying, For shame Kogo, you should know better. All Might sighed in relief seeing the boys trying to talk sense into one another. However that notition was soon destroyed as Hikari followed up with, You have to shake it like this, and began to violently shake the bottle using his super speed. You'll like that. I hope so because they're much more where that came from. Hikari yelled with a sadistic grin on his face as he put on even more speed. 
All Might quickly snatched the bottle from his hands while stating nervously, I think that's enough of that. First he has to face trial before the punishment. Awuwa, Ikari complained, but that's no fun. This made All Might's sweat drop. Well I'm glad you three are alight. Now if you'll excuse me I have to take this. Sentient smoothie to the authorities. All Might explained while trying to describe the current state of the slime thing. Just then Izuku remembered one other thing he wanted to ask All Might and exclaimed, Wait All Might before you go. However All Might had already squatted down readying himself to do one of his famous super jumps. Just before he bounced off he said over his shoulder, Thanks for your continued support. And launched off the ground and into the sky in a cloud of dust and pressure. When the dust cleared the teens were left there in awe of what just happened to them. Ko coughed from the dust cloud and said in amazement, Wow, that was incredible. He's even more mighty in person. This really was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hikari was silent but was biting his lower lip while shaking his hands and squealing in happiness. Right Izuku? Ko asked Izuku but got no response. Izuku? Ko questioned as he looked to where his friend is standing or rather was standing. As he soon saw that Izuku was gone, Ko gagged and paled at seeing his adorable friend suddenly vanish into thin air. Without looking away from the spot he stuttered out a question to Hikari. H-H-H Hikari asked San, why you don't think T that Izuku? Though Ko never got to finish as he got his answer from Hikare who suddenly screamed while pointing in the direction of where All Might bounced off. I was afraid you'd say that. Ko paled in panic. Hikari then made a pose like a cartoon character ready to zoom off screen and exclaimed, Don't worry Izuku Amakama. As quick as he could Ko raised up his hand to stop the speed teen and shouted, No wait don't forgot about. But it was too late as Hikari suddenly zoomed off leaving a trail of dust and Ko to finish his sentence saying, Ko then cracked his knuckles and neck, did a few stretches and said to no one, All right Lady Luck, take the wheel. Ko then ran to the top of a pile of garbage, jumped off and bounced on a trampoline. He got a big enough bounce where he launched into the air and grabbed a rope hanging off a passing helicopter that was going in the same direction All Might bounced off to. Meanwhile with All Might, as the number one hero was soaring through the air he felt a great weight on his left leg. He looked down and saw the wind-pressured face of Izuku clinging to him for dear life. All Might panicked for a moment as the teen shouted as best he could with the current state of his face, Please wait I have so many things I want to ask you. All Might then tried to shake him off while saying, I adore all my devoted fans but not to this extent. This is much too far even for me. Izuku was starting to lose his grip from All Might's flailing and he shouted at the blonde hero, Wait if I fall from here I'll die. Oh, good point. All I Might said quickly realizing the situation and making an emergency landing on a roof. Once they landed Izuku fell to the ground painting in fear with adrenaline coursing through his body. Once he gained back his breath he looked up to the hero who had a relieved expression on his smile. Well that was another close call. This has been fun and all young man, but I really must be off. You know, hero work and such. Just before he left Izuku cried out wait. Wait I know you're busy, before you go please let me just ask you one question. All Might inwardly sighed and replied, Alright my boy, ask away. Though just as he said those words a very familiar sensation came upon All Might. He began to inwardly freak out as blood trickled out the sides of his mouth and small streams of steam poured from his body. No no no, not now, not here. All Might freaked out as steam enveloped his body. Meanwhile Izuku was blissfully unaware of what was happening in front of him as he was rambling on about his life dreams and desires all while looking at the ground with his eyes closed. When he was done he finally opened his eyes brimming with happiness and confidence at his idol and exclaimed with passion, that's why I want to be a hero who smiles through it all and give hope to all he meets, just like you. Then Izuku's excitement quickly changed into fear and shock at who was standing in front of him. Instead of the almighty all might standing in front of him in all his mightiness, there was a very sickly looking man with messy blonde hair, angular feature, sunken blue eyes, and clothing that looked ten sizes too big for him to wear, enveloped in some kind of weird hot smoke. Izuku was barely able to to register what was going on and he was completely freaking out. W where's all might? Where'd he go? Izuku asked to no one as he looked around for his hero. He then turned his attention back to the skeletal man and asked, You aren't All Might. The skeletal man sighed a breath and replied, Yes, for I am. However he didn't get a chance to finish that thought as blood started to put out of his mouth and choke him in the process. Izuku screamed at seeing blood pool from this guy's mouth and shouted, No way. Liar, you can't be All Might. You're a fake, an imposter, a shapeshifter. The skeletal man wiped his face and replied back calmly, No I really am All Might, and I'll prove it to you. Suddenly the man flexed his arms and in a flash All Might appeared then immediately turned right back into the skeletal man. Izuku was standing there absolutely stunned. He fell to his knees as he finally accepted this sawing in amazement, you are All Might. But how? All Might wiped some more blood from his face and walking over to the stunned teen said, I'll tell you, but first you need to see this to understand fully. All Might walked over to the teen slightly lifting his shirt. 
However, just before he could show him what was under his shirt Hikaru's voice crashed against their ears. I-Z-U-K-U. He screamed. I quote him coming. Hikaru's green flash was seen zooming across the street and then up the building where he landed perfectly from a large jump. I am here. He shouted All Might's catchphrase with full gusto. He then zoomed over to Izuku where he picked him off the ground and hugged him tightly while saying, Oh Izuku I was so worried about you, I thought you were a goner. Don't you ever do that again you hear me? And what are you looking at? Ikari asked Izuku whose eyes still hadn't left All Might. Hairi then turned in the direction of Izuku's gaze and saw skeletal All Might standing there. And not knowing that it really was All Might, upon seeing him Hikari immediately freaked out with a scream. Who the hell is that? Why the hell is he here? And where the hell is All Might? Suddenly Hikari started to paint vague picture of what was going on and went through everything he was seeing right now. Izuku on his knees with a shock and fearful expression, an unsightly man appearing to remove his clothing. Then it hit Hikari and his expression changed to a mixture of shock, fear, and anger. He then grabbed Izuku by the shoulders and looking him straight in the eyes with a serious expression asked him in firm panic, Izuku did this man touch you? At hearing this question, Izuku's brain immediately did a skip leaving him with a silent response. Hikari gasped and exclaimed, Oh my god, he did touch you. He then accusingly pointed his finger at All Might and screamed, You touched Izuku didn't you? You creatinous, predatorily pervert. How dare you touch this innocent child? All Might held up his hands in defense and stammered back, No no no, you got it all wrong. I know how this may look, but you're just missing some crucial contents. Suddenly a helicopter flew overhead and Ko jumped off from the rope he was hanging onto right on top of a pile of cardboard boxes to cushion his fall. Thanks for the ride fellas. Ko called out to the pilots who each gave him a thumbs up. When they flew off Ko brushed himself off and turning to his friends said, What's up bitches, I'm here. Hey what with the weird faces? He asked his friends while turning in their gaze only to see All Might and having a similar reaction as Hikari. And what the hell is that thing? He cowers away from the sight of All Might in fear. Hikari pick him up to speed simply explaining, he touched Izuku. Ko did a double take before his brain kicked in and his expression changed from fear to anger while shouting, you touched I-Z-U-K-U. No no no, I didn't. Please just let me explain. All Might tried to reason with the teens yet to no avail. Ko cracked his knuckles and got into a fighting stance as he stated, so you like touching children do you? Well why don't we just touch you? With our fists. And our feet. Ikari added while kicking his large muscular legs in the air. Please have mercy. All Might begged while covering his face. Just before they could beat down on All Might Izuku suddenly screamed very very loud. S-T-O-O-O-P. Ko and Ikari looked to their green-haired friend with confused expression on their faces. Izuku was now breathing heavily from the stress he was feeling. And when he finally caught his breath he shouts firmly, he's not a stranger and he didn't touch me. He's All Might. Ko and Hikari could only stand there starting at their friend for a solid 30 seconds trying to make sense of what he just said. Hikari was the first one to react to this and immediately burst into a fit of uncontrollable laughter as if it were the funniest thing he had heard. And to be honest it really was when you thought about it. He then immediately stopped laughing and garbed Izuku by his shoulders. He looked him in the eyes and in a very serious tone stated, Izuku, I know you're going through a very traumatized Delsasuian from being touched by this unsightly abomination of humanity. But this is no time to be having a cinephorenic identity crisis. Hikari is right Izuku this isn't All Might. All Might is all big, and tough, and muscular, and manly, and smooth, and everything this guy isn't. Ko agreed. Izuku grabbed him back and in a serious tone exclaimed, No I'm serious, this really is All Might and he was just going to show me why and how he looks like this before you came. Show him All Might. Izuku exclaimed to Hihiro. All Might then repeated what he did for Izuku and turned back and forth from his skeletal form to his muscular hero form then right back. This completely shocked both teens and reduced them to stuttering incoherent messes like Izuku was moments prior. Izuku fell back to his knees from the stress while Ko fell on his butt in surprise. And Hikari fell right on his face in a painful flop. All Might wiped the blood from his mouth again and walked over to the stunned teens on the ground. All Might, I can't believe it. How did this happen to you? Ko asked in a soft voice. That's what I was trying to explain to your friend here until you both came here thinking I was a pedophile. All Might replied. He then came down on one knee and lifted up his shirt. What the teens saw made them gasp and cringe before the awful sight. Except for Hikari who lifted his breasted face from the ground looking at All Might's body saying with drool rolling down his face, high abs. This earned him a slap on the head from Ko. Under All Might's shirt was an enormous, yet mostly healed, wound that encompassed most of the left side of his abdomen. It was red, veiny like it couldn't heal properly and seems to make that one side of his body cave in a bit. A few years ago I got into a fight with an arch-villain of mine. The fight took a toll on my body leaving me with a collapsed lung, and most of my digestive system removed. As a byproduct I can only stay in my hero form for about three hours of the day. He explained. 
That explains some things about you recently. But who could have done this to you? Ko asked, then turned to Izuku and asked, Didn't we see something like this on the internet Izuku? Something about All Might getting into a fight some villain called the Venomous Synth or something. You're right Kosan, but he was called the Toxic Chainsaw if I remember correctly. Izuku confirmed. Hum, I see you boys have do your reassure. Well you aren't technically wrong, however that was only a cover-up story made for the media. Though the real villain who did this was a true supervillain called All For One. He explained with a sense of ominous. All For One. Izuku repeated the name. All For One. Ko questioned the name. Is he one of the three musketeers? Hikari asked. Yes, yes, and no. All Might answered in order. This was a lot for Izuku to take in all at once. All Might could transform, and his other form is nothing like him, he was practically dying, and on top of all that has an arch-villain that nearly killed him the last time they meet, this was a lot for one sitting. Way too much for one sitting. Welp you heard it straight from the horse's mouth kid. Anyway I gotta go now, I hope you three can keep my secret. All Might stated awkwardly while rubbing his neck while turning to leave. No wait. Izuku shouts at All Might. All Might turned around and gives an inquisitive look at Izuku. Izuku takes a deep breath and says, Before you go, please just answer one question I have. All Might sighed and nodded in response. Izuku collected his thoughts and explained, Ever since I was little I always had a dream to become a hero. Then I was diagnosed as quirkless at age 4. After that everyone I meet, well almost everyone, told me time and time again that I couldn't become a hero. Yet, no matter what people have done or said to me over the years I still held out always seeing you with a smile on your face saving people. So what I'm trying to say is dot 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 is it possible to be a hero even without a quirk? Ikari immediately grabbed Ko's shoulders and ran to the farther corner of the roof as if to watch it from afar. What the heck? Ko exclaimed outraged until Hikari slapped his hand over his mouth and silently exclaimed, Keep quiet. This is it. This is the thing we needed. The one thing in the whole world that can give Izuku the confidence boost he needs to keep pushing for his dream. Ko's eyes immediately widened at this knowledge and pulling Hikari's hand off said in a hushed voice, You're right, we can't interfere with this. This is Izuku's time. If this doesn't restock the fire then nothing will. All Might signed at the sight of a determined Izuku with hop flickering in his eyes. Listen kid, I'm glad I was able to be a huge inspiration to you your whole life and you have a great dream and all. The light from Izuku's eyes immediately dimmed. It's great that you want to be a hero, but without a quirk you're more of a liability than a help. You could always go into being a firefighter or a police officer. They may be under heroes though they still do good for society. It not a bad thing to dream big, however you have to think realistically. Izuku's expression immediately changed from determination to nothing. No emotion or feeling just stiff expression that shone a broken spirit. W-H-H-H-O-N-I-T. Ko and Hikari mentally screamed in their heads. So long kid. All Might said over his shoulder as he walked to the edge of the roof to transform and bounce away. Though before he could make it to the edge Ko shot his lucky coin at All Might. The coin rolled along the ground and right under All Might's foot as he was taking a step. When he did step on the coin All Might's ankle rolled causing him to spit out blood and cried out in pain. Hikari activated his electric speed boost, with electric green lightning and fully green eyes enveloping him. He dashed over to All Might and in a nanosecond revved up a super kick of that when ready he shouted at the top of his lung. Ultra. Speed. Axe kick. Hikir hit All Might's back with such an intense force that it propelled the hero right off the roof and into the distance where he disappeared from sight. Hikari stood there with his legs still extended breathing heavily after starting and stopping that move so suddenly. A grim and furious scowl pinned to his face. Ko stood there with hand raised outward clutching his luck coin tight in his grip. So tight his hand started to bleed from the coin's jagged edges. A grim and furious scowl pinned to his face as well. They were so angry, so furious with how All Might spoke to Izuku that for the first time in a long time they allowed their emotions to get the better of them and act on them. The two teens stood like that for a while, angry and breathless. When they calmed down enough they very quickly realized what they did, who they did it to, and in front of who. The two of them slowly dropped their raised limbs and slowly cocked their heads towards Izuku, who was now supporting a shocked expression. Izuku was unmoving in both body, expression, and breath. Hikari and Ko began to get worried when he showed no signs of life or anything. Before any of them could approach Izuku he finally let out a noise that told them he was still alive. And it sounded a little something like this. Hikari and Ko were so throwback by Izuku's sudden outburst of screaming that the two of them were immediately knocked to their butts. Hikari was the first to get back to his feet and zoomed over to Izuku gripping his shoulders and shaking him back to reality. Izuku snap out of it. He shouted. Ko immediately ripped Hikari from Izuku while shouting, You idiot, don't shake him around when he's panicking. Izuku continued to scream until he finally turned to his friends and yelled, What did you do? 
Ikari and Ko immediately shut up and shrunk back at their friend's outburst. Ikari again the first one to speak as he exclaimed. Now Izuku just calm down. To be fair we both had a hand in this. Ko looked at Ikari like he just said something stupid, again, and shot back, what this we stuff. I didn't kick him off a roof. You still tripped him with your coin. Ikari shot back. You guys just kicked the number one hero off a roof. Izuku shouted. Calm down Izuku this is all might we're talking about here. I'm sure he gets kicked like that every other day. Besides that I'm sure he landed safely like he always does. Ko tried to reassure him nervously. In or out of his hero form. Izuku asked back. This time Ko's slice tougher failed him and he was at a loss for words. Hikari quickly stepped in saying. And besides you have to admit he totally deserved it. I mean who does he think he is telling someone they can't follow their dream? The number one hero. Izuku replied in an early audible tone. This caused Hikari to slurp his own words and profusely sweat. If it comes straight from him then who's to say that I should keep continuing on this path? He said in a low and broken voice. Izuku began to walk away towards the roof door as Hikari and Ko tried to reach out to him to make him feel better. They both grabbed their friend's shoulder and expected him to turn and face them. But he didn't instead he just stood there unmoving and silent waiting for them to speak or he was so dazed he didn't realize they were there. The two team looked at each other nervously trying to think of something to say to their friend. Though the words failed them each and every time they opened their mouths. So they just stood there in silences trying to mouth out even a single phrase. Eventually Izuku simple walked out from their combined grasp without any resistance on the other side. The two teens watch in silence as their friend with such a grave and grimly broken spirit walked away from them. That was their friend, their inspiration, their hope. Everything that Izuku had loved and longed to desire had rubbed off onto them and they desired the same thing as well. But now seeing him like this broke the light within the two teens' spirits as it did Izuku's. The two of them slumped their heads down in defeat and walked with a solemn pace next to Izuku, almost as a ghost among the living. Meanwhile with all might, in a pile of trash in a back alleyway a huge figure suddenly brought's worth from the filth. It was all might covered in trash, muck, and blood from spitting it up. He pulled himself from the pile and brushed himself off best as he could. Now I bet you're wondering how All Might survived after rolling his ankle on a coin and getting super kicked off an eight-story building into the horizon. Well as he was sailing through the air, while spitting blood like a blonde decrepit rocket, he managed to change into his hero form last minute and direct himself to fall or really crash into a pile of trash. Not the best place to land, but anything is better than concrete. After making sure he was alright he tried to figure out what exactly happened to him. First he was talking to the scrawny yet polite green-haired kid and his two weird friends. Next he was walking away and then dot 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 oh yeah, the kid's weird friends kicked him off the roof. And he was pretty sure it was the really tall electric green one with really big thighs. Though why did they do that? Sure they were obviously protective of him but why? Just before they were practically having a fangasm overing seeing the number one hero in Japan. Oh yeah, all might remember what might have caused them to do that. He told the quirkless green haired boy he couldn't be a hero. Couldn't be a hero. Couldn't be a hero. Couldn't be a hero. Damn it. All Might hit himself as those words echoed in his head. What in the world was he even thinking? Telling that kid he's practically useless and even cushing his dreams. Who was he kidding? He remembered that kid's expression after he finished that sentence. He did crush his dreams. He's supposed to be the number one hero for God's sake. Nada. Then it dawned on All Might. He panicked and began to search his body for the item in question he was looking for. When he couldn't find it he began to panic. The soda bottle holding the slime thing was gone. Back with the boys. The three teens were now suddenly walking down the street not aware of where they were going or for how long. Their heads hung low and the expression grim or void of anything. Occasionally one of them would let out the occasional sigh of sadness. Though that was it as not even a peep escaped from any of them. They continued to walk in a haze of unawareness for what seemed like hour to moments. Eventually something shook the teens out of their trance when they heard the sound of explosions coming not too far off in the distance. Izuku was the first to poke his head up from the disturbance and looked around. Hey when did I get here? He stated not noticing his friends trailing him. He looked over the buildings and saw smoke with the odd exposition here and there. From what Izuku could gather there was some kind of villain attack going on. Seeing that he had nothing better to do and he was already here he may as well watch other heroes be well dot 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 heroes. Maybe he could see a new quirk and write it down dot 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 oh wait he can't. Izuku sighed and thought that watching from the sidelines was just as good. Ko and Hikari saw their friend perk up slightly and Mazi onto the all the commotion so they followed him to see what all the racket was about. When they got there, like always, there were tons of people trying to get a peek of the action. Heroes and police were on the scene trying to keep the situation and crowds under control. Izuku turned to one of the other bystanders and asked, What's going on? Some kid got caught by a villain and now the heroes are trying to free him while he's sending off his quirk all over the place. It's a real mess, the man replied. 
The teens managed to get into a spot where they could watch the action and saw several heroes on the screen. Kamui Woods, Death Arms, Backdraft, and Mount Lady. All of them were either trying to evacuate civilians, put out fires, and trying to subdue the villain. When they actually looked at the villain it turned out to be the slime thing from before. And the person he caught was actually the AKUGOU. The teens looked on in shock of seeing the explosive teen being enveloped by the slime thing while sending off huge blasts all over the place, destroying property and preventing the heroes from getting to close. The villain seems to be using Bakugu as some sort of living gun and shield. Izuku's mouth dropped straight open and his eyes widened at the sight of his not-so-friend captured by a villain and struggling for his life. Even if he was farther away he could tell Bakugu was panicking and crying as he struggled to fight for his life calling out in a muted voice for help while sending his quirk all over the place. He realized at this moment that Thai was his fault. If he hadn't grabbed onto All Might's leg then the bottle holding it wouldn't have slipped out and the slime thing wouldn't have gotten Bakugu. Kachin, Izuku said in a glazed voice. Katsuki, Ikari stated in surprise. Shithead, Ko said in more of a question. A smile then formed on his face as he let out a few soft giggles. I can't believe it. I mean I really can't believe it, Ko exclaimed. And in truth it really does take a whole lot to make Ko impressed with anything. Him, Katsuki Bakugu. The biggest dick was to ever poison the earth with his presence has finally gotten what he's wanted in the best way possible. To blow shit up and fight villains to gain fame and fortune. And now here he is in the perfect opportunity to do just that. Now in this real situation he is crying like a bitch. Spartacusly let his quirk go off. All while being held hostage by a real villain. Ha. Huh. Serves him right for all the rotten things he's done. Right Izuku. Izuku, Ko turned his gaze towards where his friend should be standing as he waiting for a response, however he wasn't. Ko wiped his head around to looking for his friend then caught him pushing through the crowd to the front. I see you Kegu, Ko shouted. Izuku didn't stop and he only continued to push forward until he broke through the crowd and ran right into the firing line with officers and heroes alike calling out to hide a stop. But he didn't. He couldn't hear them now that his mind was completely set on saving Bakugu. Hare then took a funny stance before he ran to catch up with Izuku until Ko stopped him exclaiming, We're not really gonna do this are we? It's Izuku, and what he does we have to do by extent. Ikari quickly replied as he zoomed through the crowds. Oh I hate that unnamed rule about our friendship. Ko complained as he ran through the crowds to catch up. K-I-C-H-A-N. Izuku cries as he runs up to his friend and the villain. Bakugu frees his mouth just long enough to say in a confused and slightly angry voice, Deku. Well if it ain't my previous skin suit, I already have this one, but what the heck two for one deal am I right? The slime thing stated as he tried to grab Izuku. Suddenly a loud whistle stopped him in place then a loud voice cried out, Hey fucker. This got the slime's attention and he turned around only to see Hikari with his back turned and furiously twerking his butt insultingly while saying, Remember me. The slime thing's eyes narrowed and it mouth twisted in a frown as it spat, Yeah I remember you. You and the golden one shook me up while I was in that bottle. If anything I'd say it actually did you some good. All that shaking appears to have solidified you. Which means this is payback time. Hikari stated while cracking his knuckles. The slime thing tried to strike at Hikari yet he was already gone and standing in a new spot. What the? The slime thing questioned. Too slow. Hikari vexed. The slime thing growled in frustration and tried to strike him again yet he missed with Hikari's speed. This continued for a while as the slime tried to smash Hikari and he would simply zoom out of the way while vexing him saying things like, Missed me. Missed me again. Still too slow. Oh you almost got me. Come on step it up. You're too slow. And more. Izuku took the opportunity to jump on the slime thing and try to dig Bakugo out with his bare hands. This got the slime thing's attention again as he exclaimed, Hey what do you think you're doing? The slime thing tried to grab him but Izuku quickly ripped his backpack off and threw it right in the slime thing's eye. The slime thing related back from the pain and cured out a shrill scream. This made him loosen his grip on Bakugo and gave Izuku more lead way to dig him out. As he was digging Bakugo whose mouth was free, shouted, What the hell are you doing, Deku? Izuku couldn't really think of anything since his mind was in overdrive trying to rescue him. Though he didn't manage to blurt out something with awkwardly lackluster to it, you looked like you needed help. Izuku reaches into the slim and with all his scrawny might pulled Bakugu free. The slime thing was still rubbing its eye from the pain and complained, Oh www, my eye, my eye. When it managed to get his vision back from the blinding tears he immediately noticed his skin sacks breaking free. He went to envelop them both, but Ikari came right in the nick of time and sent a flurry of punches right into the slime's other eye. The slime related back again and in a shrill scream yelled, My eye, my other eye. Ikari then zoomed over to the freed teens, grabbed them by their belts, and covered some distance between them. Ko was on standby waiting for the right chance to strike and seal the deal. And when it did he flicked his coin off his thumb with prediction aim. It flew through the air and up to a building with a loose supporting beam. 
The coin hit the beam and with a mighty creak it broke free and landed right on top of the slime thing causing it to cry out even louder. When the beam fell it landed right between the boys to the main part of the slime which is where the actual brain was. Ikari zoomed over to Ko, who had his coin back, and placed the two other teens at his feet. All four of them were breathless from the fear and stress. The audience was silent from the shock and suspense. Then the whole audience broke out into a huge cheer. The boys were still breathing heavily while the crowd cheered. Though that didn't stop Bakugu from barking his two cents. What the fuck was that for? I didn't need your damn help. I had him right where I wanted him. He yelled at the other three teens, mostly at Izuku. Izuku stuttered back trying to say something in response. Hikari rolled his eyes, and Ko was the only one to speak. Yeah sure you did. Getting captured while exploding everything at random while crying like a little bitch totally meant you had him. The hell you say golden pants. Bakugu yelled at him. Ko rolled his eyes in response. Suddenly the metal beam suddenly sank into the slime with its very angry face forming over it. You little brats. It'll smother you all. It yelled as it turned into a tidal wave of slime. Ah. Uh, Izuku screamed. Fuck. Bakugu shouts. Shit. Ikari crusses. Oh I forgot you're a liquid. Ko stated in surprise. Then the slime tidal wave covers the boys. A few seconds later the boys head pop up with their mouths being covered by the slime thing as it tried to suffocate them. Bakugu's hands were enveloped inside the smile so he couldn't produce exploitation. Izuku was struggling and wiggling around as much as he could to free himself. Hikari was only a little bit better. The slime didn't take into account for his height and only had him enveloped up to his shoulders. Hikari too in deep breath closed his eyes and began to vibrate. He vibrates faster and faster until his whole body looked blurry. The vibration also caused the slime around him to superheat up and began to sizzle and bubble. Y-O-U-C-H. Stop that, it hurts. The slime thing cried out. Hikari kept vibrating and burning the slime around him. He then started to move around the slime and over to the two other teens. He burned the slime around them and allowing them to breathe again. He quickly garbed them both by their shirt collars and began to work his way out of the slime. Meanwhile Ko, who managed to escape, was on the outlines trying to dig away at the slime to free his friends. When suddenly he saw a very familiar head of electric green hair slowly move towards him, he quickly plunged his arms into the slime and grabbed hold of Hikara's shirt. With all his might he began to pull his friends free, but the slime wasn't about to give up yet. It tired to envelop the three teen again despite the amount of pain it was in from its own body being boiled. By won't let you live. It roared at the top of its non-existence lungs. Izuku and Bakugu struggled as hard as they could. Hikari vibrated and pulled as hard as he could. Ko pulled with all his might. Just when they thought they were going nowhere they felt something help pull the boys free. The four teens were pulled free roughly and fell to the pavement. They looked up only to see a very familiar smile and blonde hair on top of a bodybuilder's body. All might. Izuku questioned the tall hero. I'm sorry young man, I really should start applying what I preach, said the hero with a serious look on his smiling face. All Might then revved his arm back and cried, Missouri. The slime thing was paralyzed with fear as he cried out, no not again, smash. All Might sired and punched the slime thing dead on. What happened next was so fast and so amazing that if you blinked you'd miss it. The slime thing immediately splattered all over the place like a bucket of paint. Along with every fire being put out by the wind pressure, even the weather completely changed as it went from cloudy to completely clear in a matter of seconds. Even the slime left on the boys blew away along with their hair in crazy directions just from being so close. Bakugu was silent. Hikari was silent. The not easily impressed Ko and easily impressed Izuku could only say in a low voice, Wow. The crowd went wild and All Might gave his signature smile to the before dashing off. The officers and heroes were on the screen cleaning up the mess along with the four teens. Once they four of them came to their senses, Bakugu did what he normally does and stormed off away from the other three teens in a huff. Hikari saw Izuku's things scattered across the ground and getting to his feet he zoomed over and regained the contents of his bag then dropped it in his lap. When Izuku regained his sense and got to his feet he was immediately approached by Kamui Woods. Izuku was very nervous as the man had a very displeased look on his face. Izuku immediately pushed the thought of asking him for an autograph. Good thing too since he immediately began to chew Izuku out for his dangerous, reckless, and stupid behavior, making the nervous green-haired teen shrink away from the man. Ko was standing not too far getting the same treatment by another hero, though he was ignoring him as he slapped his hand over his mouth by force, watching Izuku get chewed out for doing the right thing, while glaring dangerously at Kamui Wood making the hero next to him very very nervous. However there was one who would not stand for how Izuku was being talked to especially by someone whose job it was to help people and wasn't doing said job while the catadurf was happening. Kamui received a grim garb on his shoulders by said person. However the hero told the person to leave and pushed his hand away. Unfortunately this lead to Kamui Wood's hand getting rough crushed by the person's bigger hand. 
Kamui Wood shuddered at the pain of his crushing hand and immediately turned around to see who was doing this disrespect to him. Though instead of seeing a person he saw a person's chest, a male one to be exact, in a school uniform. He started to sweat knowing if the first thing he saw was a person's chest then they were no doubt very big. His eyes slowly climbed up to see the person's face and saw the angry scowl of Hikari looking down at Kamui Woods like a displeased parent. For Kamui Wood's mere 5'6 stature he was basically dwarfed by all of Hikari's giant 6'4 stature. Normally he wouldn't be so frage intend by anyone so large as he worked with larger people all the time. But seeing this person was a student made a cold chill run up his spine. Kamui Woods gulped silently and composed himself before speaking. He told Hikari to fist let go of him and to say out of this as this was hero's work and he was also a comparator in this. Hikari increased his grip on Kamui's hand and replied, Oh really? I didn't know that doing nothing when things get sticky was part of a hero's job. Kamui Wood's eyes widened at his statement and was in utter silence of it. He was so stunned at first he don't know how to respond. If his face was covered by his mask Hikari would have seen Kamui Wood's gaping mouth. The hero then quickly composed himself and firmly stated back as an authoritative figure, How dare you take that tone with me young man? Do you know who I am and what I do? I'm a professional and your friend has interfered in professional work that nearly costed his life along with yours and the victims. Oh please, the victim deserved that and more. Hikari said out of the side of his mouth. What? Kamui questioned. I said, and what were you doing Mr. Professional? Hikari asked sarcastically. Kamui went to reply but Hikari cut him off immediately saying, That's right you weren't doing anything. You, big meaty claws, fire hose dick. And Mount Titties were all sitting on the sidelines with your thumbs up your asses. He yelled at the hero's face. Izuku was the only one to step up to the plate, doing your job, while you all stood back for such and such reason. Kamui really couldn't believe that of all the things that have happened in his life he would never believe that he would scolded by a student for his own job performance. He shook himself out of his trance and trying to put this back into his favor as the pro he said, You are a student, you don't know anything about hero work or what we have to do. So don't you dare think for even a moment that you know what it's like to put your life on the line every single day, and sometimes without even a civil thank you. Hikir's expression turned even more grim as he loomed over the hero who was now starting to sweat bullets. Hikara's expression then turned into a curl-looking smile which made Kamui go on edge. He stepped close to the hero, causing him to tense up, and leaned his face right on the tip of Kamui Wood's mask. In a voice that sounded like it came from the gullet of a hole he stated, You know what? You're absolutely right, sir. And I'm sorry for my behavior. Kamui was getting some serious mixed signals. So let me show my appreciation for all your hard work and give you proper. Hikari trailed off as his eyes turned green and eclectic green lightning zipped all over his body. Kamui was so stunned to see what happened to the kid he didn't even notice when he roughly grabbed the collar of his outfit and lifted up on his tiptoes till it was too late. Compensation. Hikari finished his sentence with his wicked grin still adorning his face. Kamui knew he was in trouble now. Though it was too late to call for help or fight back, he suddenly felt a great force push against his back that made him feel like he was squeezed through a pipe at high velocity. It was so powerful that it nearly knocked the air out of Kamui Wood's lungs and pass out. The feeling of the force pushing head against his back suddenly stopped just as quick as it came on and he let himself fall to the ground. Kamui opened his eyes with a great feeling of nausea and dizziness hit him like a truck. He lifted himself into a sitting position only to see Hikari looming over him with green electricity coursing all over his body. Hope you enjoy your vacation, hero. Hikari spat the last part before completely disappearing from sight in a flash of light and dust. Kamui Woods finally looked around himself only to quickly realize he was no longer in Japan. The buildings were different, the streets were different, the people were different and the signs were written in a completely different language. However, Kamui Woods was in luck since one of the signs was written in Japanese under the main language. It read Welcome to Beijing. Wait a minute, Kamui question? Beijing. In China, on the other side of the world. Kamui Woods' eyes began to twitch violently before he let out a deep gutter scream of angst that sailed across the ocean. Meanwhile back at Japan, Izuku was standing in shock of what he just saw. First the pro hero Kamui Woods was going to chew him out, then Hikari stepped in intimated the pro and chewed him out. Then Kamui tried to turn it around until Hikari graves the hero activating his speed pulse and vanishing with the pro. Ko was standing on the sidelines watched a lower class hero praise Katsuki for his amazing quirk bravery and heroism, even asking him to become a sidekick of his in the future. Bakugo only told him to piss off. Ko growler internally at this scene. Izuku was the hero not Bakugo. All the blonde did was cry and blast anything within a radius of his arms. He had to teach this ass a lesson. The only question was how. He couldn't just go up and wallop a hero in broad daylight and in public no less. He had to be smart and creative with his approach. Though those weren't his strong suits so he ultimately decided to let luck take the wheel. 
He took out his lucky coin and smiley let it roll off his thumb. The coin continued to roll along the ground and toward the unsuspecting hero and Bakugu. The hero was still trying to talk to the blonde yet still not getting so much as an inch. He went to take a step closer and Koss lucky coin found itself right under his foot causing the hero to roll his ankle. The hero cried out in pain and froze in place from the pain screaming in agony. Then the coin shot out from under the hero's boot and flew like a bullet from the pressure and right into a billboard. The coin perfectly hit a weak point on the damaged billboard and the whole thing came crashing down right on top of the frozen hero. Lucky for the hero the billboard was already missing quite a bit of itself already so he wasn't crushed to death. More of smushed very hard. And speaking of which, even though most of the billboard was already destroyed, along with whatever it was advertising, one part of it remained which spelled out the word lame. The coin flew back into Ka's hand as the billboard fell on the hero. Ko placed the coin back in his pocket and made a fake gasp at the sight of the billboard on top of the hero. Oh my word, what an unfortunately tragic end to this hero. Rest in spaghetti never forget it. Ko stated sarcastically while playing the world's smallest violin on his pointer finger and thumb. Just then Akari showed up again with a satisfied expression on his face as he brushed his hands off. He then ran over and collected both Izuku and Ko before any other heroes or law officials could chew them out. Then in a flash of green the three teens disappeared from sight in an instant. The other heroes on the scene could only stand by and watch in shock and awe as one of their compatriots was dispatched by a student, a student. Then another hero met a cruel fate by a billboard that may or may not have been the doing of another student. Then the first student that took Kamui Woods appeared out of nowhere and garbed the other two teens and disappeared again. That is one fast kid. Death Arms stated in shock with wide eyes while his short hair blew from the air current from Hikara's speed. Oh uh, guys, I'm just as surprised as all of you are at whatever just happened. But aren't we forgetting something or rather someone? Stated while turning back to normal size. Suddenly a vibrating noise was heard from somewhere on Mount Lady's body. The blonde woman then deposited a phone from somewhere and looking at the caller ID her eyes widened in shock. Oh my god, it's Kamui. She exclaimed while answering the call. Kamui, we were starting to get worried about you. We saw you with that really tall green kid one minute, disciplining him, and then the next you two vanished into thin air. Are you okay? Kamui then answered oh so very humbly. <laughs> Mount Lady then quickly declined the call and stated quickly. He doesn't sound okay. Hikara then deposited his two friends on a back street away from all the commotion and craziness of the city. Ko unfortunately fell on his lower back painful while Izuku fell on his stomach in a pile of himself. And Hikari then fell on his back and made a bleh. Sound of relief from using his super pulse so much. The three teen laid on the hard ground for a few minutes trying to catch their breath until Izuku finally got to his feet and began to walk away. Though he didn't go far as he simply sat down on a pile of cardboard boxes left on the side of the road. He slumped his head down and made a sad sounding sigh. Hikari was the first to jump to his feet and approaching Izuku he asked him what was wrong. Though instead of words they came out as raspy exhausted breaths. Ko saw this and coming to his feet while rubbing his back he approached his friend and took a seat next to him. What wrong Izuku? Ko asked. Nothing. He replied. Nothing. Doesn't make that face. Ko said skeptically. Izuku said nothing. Is this cause I dropped a billboard on a hero possibly causing him to retire early? Or cause Hikari abducted a high ranking pro and dropped him off in the middle of the ocean? Ko asked. Izuku gave him a confused look and asked, What? Ko began to see knowing this wasn't what Izuku was upset about in Hikari, who still couldn't speak, smacked Ko on the back of his head. Izuku sighed and finally said, It's the heroes, when they were, telling me off. And well dot 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 they were right. What? Ko shouted in outrage. What do you mean what? They're right. I was being dumb and reckless and I shouldn't have interfered and let the pros handle it in an... Izuku trailed off as he sunk lower into himself. I see you KU stop. Ko shouted stopping Izuku's ramblings. He sprung to his feet and grabbing Izuku by his cheeks he pulled his face towards his. Izuku look at me. Izuku refused to make eye contact. Look at me. Ko said more aggressively. Izuku finally looked at the determined and outraged face of his friend. You were right to interfere in that situation and you shouldn't let some tight wearing do-gooder tell you that. Sure what you did was really really stupid and reckless and could have gotten you and us killed. And you also tried to save a person who really didn't deserve to be saved. Ko exclaimed. But dot 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 the pros. Izuku argued weakly. We're doing nothing Izuku and you shouldn't let them tell you what you did was the wrong thing. Ko cut him off while pressing his face tighter. But they're pro heroes. They, Izuku tried to argue. Don't matter. Izuku the title of pro hero is nothing but that. A tittle. Just like a doctor, a lawyer, a politician, and a teacher is nothing but a title made to sound like something important. When the reality of it is that underneath that suit there's nothing but a person. And people can be wrong Izuku. And they were wrong. 
Izu said nothing and simply looked away from his friend's gaze. Ko signed exacerbated and replied, Izuku dot 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 the main thing that I'm trying to say is that you did do it. You didn't stop and think or sit on the sidelines with such and such excuse like the other heroes. You just went right in there knowing it was the right thing to do, despite the danger and the odds stacked against you. And that speaks volumes about you about who you are as a person and a hero Izuku. It doesn't matter if you're powerful or powerless. The main thing is that you have the will and heart to do what's right and help those in need every time. And to be honest I think you have too much will and heart for your own good. Izuku couldn't help but let a small smile fall on his squished face from his friend's encouraging words. He slowly grabbed Ka's hands and gently pulled them off. He wiped some tears staining his eyes and asked, How do you even know all this Ko-san? Who taught you this? Ko gave him a warm smile and replied, You did Izuku. Izuku's eyes widened not believing what he was hearing. Had he really taught Ko all that he said? And if so then when? He was sure he never said anything like that, ever. He looked over to Ikari who was still out of breath, and he gave him a panting out of breath smile and thumbs up to agree. Izuku was so happy right now, he couldn't even put it into words. He felt hot happy tears rolling down his face and a warm feeling like a fire exploding in his chest. He choked back his sobs and squeaked out, Guys, I'm... Though before he could finish he a loud booming voice was suddenly heard barreling towards them from another street. Echa The voice laughed. Young man, have no fear. The voice showed itself to be All Might himself in his hero form striking a pose as he entered. For I am. However All Might didn't get to finish as he suddenly changed back into his civilian form while coughing up a huge mouthful of blood. The teens, minus Akari, all screamed in fear of this sight. All Might quickly wiped the blood from his mouth and said, I'm glad I was able to find you kids. Almost thought I would have lost you, what with your fast friend. Hikari said nothing but put on an annoyed expression while crossing his arms and puffing his chest. Ko blew a stray strand of hair from his face and exclaimed, Oh, it's just you all blight. For a second there I thought it was someone important. He said sarcastically, What do you even want? Shouldn't you be back there cleaning up the mess and answering questions from the press? Under normal circumstances, yes I would, but what with my injury I can't anymore. Though I did come here for a reason. All Might began to explain until Ko cut him off exclaiming in outrage, No wait, don't tell me. You came here so you could also chew out Izuku what he did even though it was the right thing to do. And on top of that you expect me and Hikari kun to apologize to you for kicking your thin ass off a building. Since you're the number one hero and shit. Ko shouted as he approached All Might with every words he spoke. Even though Ko was much smaller than All Might, even in his civilian form, he still felt himself shrink under the intense and crushing gaze of the young golden-eyed teen. All Might waved his hands dismissively and nervously while as he exclaimed, No no no, nothing like that at all. In fact I really deserved that kick into oblivion. Well guess what Mr. Hero? You ain't gettin' any apology because wait what? Ko suddenly asked in confusion. All Might sighed and replied, I don't know the full circumstances of why you did that. But if I were in your shoes I'd probably do the same. Ko was silent for a moment until he finally stated awkwardly. Well dot 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 this is dot 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 new. All Might straightened himself out and said, Look I'm really sorry for bothering you, but I just want to talk to your friend. Just talk. Ko asked skeptically. Yes just talk. I'm not going to chew him out or anything like that. You have my word as a hero. And how much is that worth? All Might sighed. You have my word as the man I am, Toshinori Yagi. Ko narrowed his eyes and hummed to himself as he thought. All Might began to sweat a bit, and Ko with a sigh finally replied, Fine, you can talk. All Might smiled. But, let me make this clear. Try anything funny at all and this time Hikari will kick you into the horizon. Or hell just do to you what he did to Kamui Woods and send you to a different country. I hear Russia's weather is partially dreadful this time of year. All Might blinked a few times before he asked, Wait, you did what to Kamui Woods? Ko coughed and waved it off saying, Never mind that, just don't try anything got it. All Might nodded his head. Ko stepped back and All Might approached Izuku who was standing there frozen in fear and amazement at the same time. All Might stopped when he was only about a yard away, not wanting to get too close to the other two teens giving him death glares. He scratched the back of his head and finally spoke, Young man, I came here too. Apologize to you. Izuku's eyes widened with shock at this. Was the number one hero in Japan really apologizing to him, and why? I was wrong for telling you what I said before. In my old age I see that I've become hypocritical when it comes to the very thing that I preach so highly. Only when I saw you go out there and rescue that child from the slime thing that I saw for the first time in a very long time what it truly means to be a hero again. That was the only reason I was able to push myself past my limits and save you. All Might rambled on while Izuku simply looked on in astonishment. Look what I'm trying to say is, ugh, this is so hard to put in words. Let me just tell you what I should have said from the very beginning. All Might took a deep breath and spoke, quirk or no quirk young man, as long as you have the heart to do what is right any person on earth can do good in the name of justice. 
and you can be a hero. Izuku was stunned and completely unable to move from the words he just heard. For years he wanted to hear those words from his idol's lips and now he has. It filled Izuku up with so much emotion that he fell to his knees and began to sob heavily with the weight of stress and years of pent-up emotions finally pouring right out of him in one sitting. All while the little flame in Izuku's being began to grow a little bit more. Even Ko and Hikari were completely stiffened by the man's words and had their mouths hung open in shock. For the first time since they all meet they finally got to see their friend's lifelong dream come true. They were ecstatic and joyous and flabbergasted all at the same time. The only thing they could do was stand at Izuku's sides and waited for him to finish letting out all his emotional turmoil. All Might stood there and waited for Izuku to calm down enough to where he could get him to speak. He bent down and asked, Tell me, when you ran out to save that boy did your legs simply start moving as if you were switched into autopilot? Izuku gulped down some air and replied with a nod of his head. All Might smiled and said, Then you truly are worthy. Worthy? Worthy of what? Izuku though as he tried to calm himself. Young man, I hereby claim you worthy of inheriting my quirk. All Might suddenly stated. Suddenly the whole entire world around the three teens came to a completely screaming halt. Izuku stopped crying immediately. Hikari was acting like he was seeing every possible equation. And Ko looked like he just saw Hikari dress in a skimpy outfit. Again. Wait wait wait. What? Inherent your quirk. But that's impossible. Quirks can't just be given to someone out of will. They're transferred through genes. Science has proven this. Unless blah blah blah. Izuku continued to ramble on trying to make any sense of what he was hearing. Ikari was looking around aimlessly like a lost child while vibrating until his expression and vibrating came to a halt as if his brain just stopped. All Might was looking onto this scene and not knowing how to stop it. All while Ko slapped his face and groaned a deep sigh of frustration. Nice job All Blight. You put Izuku into another of his muttering fits and Ikari just went blue screen. Ko exclaimed aggravated. Are they gonna be okay? All Might asked nervously. Ko sighed and replied, Yeah they're fine, I just have to reboot the two of them. Ko then went into his bag and deposited a candy bar. He ripped the treat form at packaging and placed the food into Hikari's mouth. The treat then disappeared into Hikari's mouth to the sound of gnoming and a shredder. Hikari's eyes immediately lit back up to normal and he smiled at the golden-eyed teen confirming he was back. Ko then went up to Izuku and yanked hard on his ear. Oh, Izuku complained. Izuku you're doing that thing again. Ko deadpanned as if he's done this many times before. Sorry. Izuku apologizes as Ko releases his ear. Now, before we continue with this journey of ours through mind fuckery, can you just explain what you meant by inherent your quirk? Ko asked. I suppose that was a bit of a bombshell for you. All Might sweat dropped while rubbing his head. Yes, they all spoke in unison. And what up with that? I'm pretty sure that Izuku is not related to you. Unless dot 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 did your mother have a secret relationship with All Might? Ko inquired. What? No no no, that impossible. I'm sure my mom would tell me something like that to me. Izuku immediately debunked the theory. And Akari could nearly contain his laughter. And I can assure you I've never had a significant other in my life. All Might confirms. That's just sad. Ko side mouthed. Well before I explain the nature of my quirk, tell me have you ever wondered what my quirk really is? All Might asks. Izuku pondered this for a moment before he answered. To he honest I'm not entirely sure. I mean some forms say that it's super strength or some kind of power boost. It's definitely not good looks, that's for sure. Ko said vexingly. Ha ha ha. Very funny. All Might said sarcastically. Though you aren't entirely wrong or right young man. You see my quirk was passed down to me from my previous sensei. And she got it from her, and so on. In simpler terms it's a stockpiling quirk that gets stronger the farther it's been passed on and built on. The power I now hold is no as one for all. I knew it. You are a freaking three musketeer. Ikari shouted finally getting his voice back. All Might and the other teens were silent for a while at the Taub teens outburst until All Might stated, May I please finish? Ikari nodded and All Might continued, as I was saying my quirk. One for all, was given to me when I was no older than you three, when I too was a quirkless child myself. Currently I'm the eighth holder, though when you inherit it you will become the ninth holder. Izuku looked up to his idol in awe of the information he was now receiving firsthand. No one, not even the press or other pro heroes, ever now the true name and nature of All Might's quirk. Now here he was getting it straight from the horse's mouth. The very withered, decrepit, nearly deceased horse that is. Though this feeling didn't last long as Ko and Hikari suddenly shouted. W-H-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
All Might rubbed the back of his neck while sweating nervously and replied, Like I said before, my title and age have gotten the better of me over the years and I've been blinded by the very truth I once lived myself, and I'm certainly not proud of it either. Co-signed aggravated and stated, Well I suppose late is better than never. Back to the topic at hand. All Might stated, Young man, I'm not forcing you to do this as this is your decision alone. So will you? Yes. Izuku suddenly blurted out jumping to his feet. All Might smiled and chuckled as he said, I like your enthusiasm kid. Meet me tomorrow at 7am sharp at Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. Izuku stood their head held high, tear pouring down his face, with his two closest friends at his sides to witness it all. Struck with a newfound determination to truly push himself forward he knew that now was the start of his story to becoming a hero. And he felt the flicker of the fire burning deep within him burning bright with this new wave of emotions feeding it. The morning air was cold and the sun just peeking over the horizon with the wind also blowing a cold chill, along with the fact that it was also right on the water making it even colder. However the day prior and coming were supposed to be hot, so a cold morning was refreshing for most, especially for All Might who was walking along the sidewalk to the beach. He liked the calm and cold of the mornings as it numbed the pain of his scar and gave a sense of freshness down his sore throat from coughing blood. He was just about there to Dagaba and decided to check the time. He pulled out his phone and it read 6.45 a.m., Maybe he should have left a little bit later. Now he was gonna have to be bored waiting for his new protege to get here. And knowing most kids he probably would be late on his first day. Maybe he could assess the area of the beach to find out what Izuku could do first, since he could tell the young teen doesn't work out a lot, if at all. He breathed a breath from the refreshing cold air and held it in for a while until something spooked him so bad he gasped and immediately began coughing blood. A flash of green streaked past his field of vision and an air current blew by him so powerfully that it caused his hair to blow in front of his face. After pushing his hair back and wiping his mouth clean he blinked a few times to make sure he really did see. Whatever it was and exclaimed, what in the world are you doing here? Someone fished his own sentence in a different way. Lucky they didn't sound too far ahead so All Might picked up the pace a bit. I mean who else would come to this beach and at this hour of the morning, besides him of course. When he got to the source of the mysterious voice he found none other than his protege as two weird friends standing on the sidewalk near the beach. What were their names again? Kuna Kenan and Ikari Sokuto Wright. Ko was sitting calmly and relaxed on one of the concert dividend that separated the beach from the sidewalk, with a smug look on his face as he flicked a gold coin. He was wearing black sweatpants and shoes with a black hoodie. Hikari was standing next to Ko complaining about something to him with a deep pout on his face as he held an extra large cup of coffee in one hand and a box of donuts in the other. He was wearing a white hoodie with grey sweatpants and green shoes. As All Might approached the two teens he began to hear their conversation unfold. How in the world did you even get here before me? Hikari complained to Ko with a deep pout as he stamped his foot. Ko flicked his coin a few times before answering. Don't know, I guess I'm just lucky, he stated with a smug look. Hikari groaned at his catchphrase in response. Lucky lucky me. Would you please stop saying that stupid catchphrase? Hikari moaned. Right after you stop being a shameless flirt. Ko shot back. All Might thought now would be a good time to interject into their conversation and clearing his throat said. Hello boys, fancy seeing you here. All Might. They both said in surprise. I didn't expect to see you two here so early in the morning or even here at all. Why are you here if you don't mind my asking? All Might asked them. Ko stole a donut from Hikari as he answered. Are you kidding me? One-on-one -on -one training from the number one hero. The better question is why aren't we here? All Might scratched his head awkwardly and stated. I don't mean to sound like that guy but I sort meant this for young Midoriya exclusively. And I thought you too, um, dislike me. Ko waved his hand at his accusation and replied. Oh don't be silly All Might we don't dislike you. He just made a really 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 dumb decision that made us mad. Gee thanks. All Might stated sarcastically. You're welcome, Ko replied cheerfully. Hikari chuckled as he took a sip from his coffee cup and replied. Yeah and besides it kind of our duty to butt into our friend's stuff. Whatever Izuku does we butt into it. And whatever we do Izuku and one of us also butts into it. All Might chuckled and said. I have to admit it's nice to see such close friends like you three. Though I must ask why you three are this close to one another if you don't mind. Ko stopped flipping his coin and began to rub it nervously. Well that's kind of a delicate issue. But to give you an idea let's just saw that I out Izuku for everything I have. Ko then looked down at an All Might umbrella that was standing at his side and slowly stroking it continued, literally everything. All Might's curiosity was piqued at this point wanting now to know more than ever what young Ko meant by all that. Yet he knew he shouldn't push the subject any further, maybe he would find out another time at a latter date. Then Hikari gave his answer as he literally inhaled the entire box of donuts in under a few seconds along with the large coffee and under a few chugs. Izuku is one of the very few people, apart from my family, that tolerates me and my personality. Hikari explains. PSH. That's a lie. I tolerate you. Ko shot at him, 
P.S.H. Yeah right. You can nearly stand me on a good day. Ikari shot back. Only cause I prefer my company with a slower pace and not a 12 mile a minute personality. Please I've meet people with a fast pace and even they are overwhelmed by me. Ahem. Boys. All Might called the two teens attention. I don't really see the harm in letting you tag along in young Midoriya's training. After all as a hero it's my job to encourage and teach the next generation of heroes. The two boys the pumped their fists while saying, yeah, silently, by the way what are your quirks again? All Might asks awkwardly. Electric speed. Ikari exclaims cheerfully. Look, Ko says calmly. Luck isn't a quirk. All Might's sweat dropped. Yes it is. They both state. Alright alright I'll take your word for it. All Might agrees with them. Now we just have to wait for the bell of the ball. Ikari jokes. No need to wait he's already here. Ko stated while pointing a thumb behind him. Ikari and All Might looked behind where Ko was sitting and in the not too far distance they saw Izuku running as fast as he could. All Might was baffled. Extremely baffled. When what how did you know that? All Might stammered out flabbergasted. Ko shrugged his shoulders as he replied smugly, guess I'm just lucky. Ikari groaners again while All Might sweat dropped at his response. Then turning to Ikari he asked the tall teen in a hushed voice, is that his catchphrase or something? Oh trust me All Might it only get worse the more you hear it. You'll be prematurely bald from pulling your hair out. Ikari replies in a hushed tone. Izuku finally catches up to the trio completely winded from his sprinting. He rests his hands on his knees and bends over huffing and puffing to catch his breath. Once he gains enough air into his lungs he chokes out a few coughs and looking to All Might in a breathless voice repeatedly apologized for being late. All Might looks at his phone again and sees that it's only 6.50 and tell Izuku calm down since he's not late at all. Well All Might you know what they say. To be early is to be on time and to be on time is to be late. Ko states. Izuku finally notices his two other friends standing next to his idol and with a confused expression on his spent face asks them breathlessly. What are you guys doing here? Before either of them could open their mouths to answer Izuku quickly cut them off saying. Oh who am I kidding myself? Of course you'd be here. Ko and Ikari smile in response. Well I'm glad that we had this conversation but for now it's time for your training. All Might butts in. Are you three young men ready? Yes sir. They all exclaim. All Might smiles with a nod and says. Good. Then let's begin. To say that the training All Might had planned for them was hard would have been an understatement. It was gurgling, rough and tough, it pushed them past their limits, it made them feel like they were more dead than alive, it was hell, at least for whoever was doing said routine. For two of the three teens aren't having as much trouble as the wimpy green friend. Currently Hikari was taking his training in stride as he dashed up and down the beach grabbing whatever he could, pilling it in his arms and bringing it to the curb, then repeating said process at half the speed of sound. Ko wasn't doing much of anything apart from sitting on some scrap meat as a chair and watching the other two which flicking his coin. And Izuku, oh poor poor Izuku, he had it worst of all. Not only was he pulling a full-sized refrigerator through the slick morning sand without a dolly, but he had all might of all people sitting on top of it and in his hero form. This literally could not be any worse. Come on young Midoriya, you can do it. If you want to reach your goals you have to push yourself beyond your limits. I've never done this kind of training before. Shouldn't I be starting on something a bit more my current speed? You're already making it heavy adding an extra 600 pounds. Izuku yelped out as he pulled with all his might. You only have a few months before the UA entrance exam starts so have to work hard to bulk up fast. Also I've been slimming down lately so now I'm 560. All Might explains. You can do it Izuku. Also are you sure the two of you aren't related? Cause that is such a damn thing to say. Ko stated bluntly. Izuku stopped pulling and All Might nearly fell off his perch at the question. For the last time Ko and were are not related. Izuku exclaimed. Ko just shrugged. Well whatever. But I'm still keeping that theory on the back burner. But All Might's right you gotta push hard Izuku. P.S.H. Yeah right, you're one to talk. Me and Izuku are the only ones working. Ikari dashed into the conversation. Correction, Izuku is working and you're taking small debris so you can maintain your super speed and not have to compensate for it while leaving the heavy stuff for Izuku. Ko states snoodly. At least I'm doing something. And what are you doing laxing Lucy? Ikari shoots back. I'm supervising, so one of you three ding-dongs don't hurt yourself by accident. Also I'm your good luck charm so chance of something bad happening decreases. Ko replies with a heavy dose of high sarcastic snobbishness. Hikari rolls his eyes in response at his reply and attitude. Izuku was still trying to pull the refrigerator with everything he had, which wasn't much, and eventually slid and fell to the ground. He pulled himself up and in turning to All Might with tears in his eyes cried out, I thought you said you were going to give me your quirk. How is this giving me a quirk? All Might chuckled before taking out his phone and snapping a picture of Izuku's expression as he was still on the ground crying. He looked at the picture after taking it and not only saw Izuku crying in the photo, but also Hikari had photobombed it making a silly face holding up two peace signs. 
along with Ko who had a shocked expression on his face as he was being pulled by Hikari, no doubt having been dragged into the photo. All Might turned to the two teens off to the side and saw Hikari with a happy smile on his face and Ko with a shell-shocked expression as he softly asked what happened. All Might turned back to Izuku and explained, The reason I brought you here to move all this junk is not just for strength training, community service, and restoring the beach, but also to ready your body for my quirk. As of now you are an unsuited vessel for it, but I thought you said I was worthy of inheriting it. Izuku cried out, You are spiritually worthy, yet not physically worthy. If you tried to use all for one without any form of strength then your very limbs would explode from the sockets. All Might exclaimed as Izuku began to scream at the very thought. Ko had been so shocked by this news of his quirk that he missed his coin as it fell to the ground. While Hikari said silently, I just peed myself. He then excused himself to go and change and was back only moments later. That's why we're here. The more strength that you have the more you will be able to control all for one. All Might said as he hopped off the refrigerator and over to a pile of garbage where he placed his hand on top of it. You see young Midoriya you in particular have to work harder than anyone else to achieve this goal. Mastering all for one is no small fate and you have to push yourself far past your limit in order to grab hold of it. You have to find your limit and push past it, plus Ultra. All Might shouts as he crushes the trash in one push revealing the sunrise behind it. Only then will you find your light after wafting through the dark. Izuku looked on in wonder and awe of his mentor and his words. It was clear to him then that he had to work harder than her ever had before. He wanted his dream to come true then he would have to do better than everyone else around him. He knew he had to do this and he was damn well going to. Then All Might hopped back on his perch and shouted, Now pull this fridge like you mean it. Izuku sighed at this losing his previous feeling just as quick as it came and grabbing the ropes he pulled with everything he had again. Come now young Midoriya is that all you have? You're gonna have to do better than that if it means you'll get into the entrance exam. All Might called an encouragement. Oh come on all right give him a break. I mean, Izuku hasn't really done anything this physical and well, ever. So give him something easier to work with or at least hop off that fridge to reduce the weight fat might. Ko vex the hero. Fat might fat might fat might fat might fat might fat might. Ikari chanted like a child. All might sweat had dropped at their behavior and replied boldly. If he can move this then he can move anything in this wreck. Now give it all you got, plus ultra. I am. Izuku squeaked out. Come on you can do better than that. All might encouraged him. I can't. He squealed out again, this time feeling a warm sensation build up inside of him. Get off the fridge all blight. Ko commanded the hero. Sure you can, now heavy. All Might continued to encourage. I can't. Izuku squealed as his body screamed for rest and oxygen. The warm feeling was now feeling like a flame and it was growing larger the more he pushed. All Might. Ko yelled. Young Midoriya. All Might called. Fat Might Fat Might Fat Might Fat Might Fat Might. Hikar chanted. This was too much for Izuku to handle at once. He was pulling with all he had on an object that was too big for him to pull along with the extra weight. His mentor wasn't helping as he was the extra weight and shouting at him to keep going. Ko was yelling at All Might to stop which didn't help, and Hikari wasn't even helping at all. He felt the fire inside of him burst forth in a huge wild flame that engulfed the whole inside of his body being fed by his stress and building frustration. It was ready to burst through him and so it did when Izuku shouted at the top of his lungs, I can't. Suddenly Izuku exploded, literary, in a huge ball of fire. The force from the explosion was so great that it burned the rope around him instantly along with knocking Ko, Hikari, and even All Might right off their feet and onto their asses at the sudden surprise and power exerted by it. The force from the explosion stopped as quickly as it came and there stood Izuku in the center of it all completely clothed in a veil of green flames that seems to be seeping out from his own body making looking like he was made of fire. The heat from his fire was so intense that it not only burned the ropes in a snap, but some of the nearby trash, and warped the metal of the fridge, along with making the sand under his feet turn into glass. Ko, Hikari, and All Might all slowly got to their feet solely while not taking their eyes off the young scrawny teen that was now made and clothed in fire, but looked on with shock and awe unable to say anything at what they were looking at. That was just so frigathing and breathtaking at the same time. Izuku was now breathing heavily as he let his stress and frustration finally subside in him. He took one last breath and finally opened his shut eyes. When he did the first thing he saw were the star-struck expressions of his friends and mentor. He looked around trying to find what it was that had them slack-jawed but that he looked down at himself and saw that his body was now made of light green fire. He reeled back for a moment almost ready to freak out, but he quickly noticed that he wasn't burning alive, just living in it. He looked between his hands and body unable to comprehend words. WH, what's going? WH, what is? He slurred in fascination and fear. Hikari was the only one able to speak and react the only way any of them could by stating, Izukun, your dot 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 on fire, was the only thing to come out of his mouth. Suddenly Izuku felt light, 
real light, as if he just lost a whole bunch of weight in an instant. He briefly wondered why he felt like this until Hikari answered his question exclaiming, And now you're fly I mean fly. Hizuku looked down at the ground and noticed that he was already three feet off of it. He immediately panicked and his body started to tumble through the air uncountably was while still ascending. Izuku screamed in panic and cried out, Guys help. Hikari was the first to recover from his shock and aid Izuku. Don't worry Izukun I got you. Hikari exclaimed as he zoomed over and grabbed his hand before he could descend higher. Unfortunately he forgot Izuku was still on fire and immediately let go screaming in pain. Hod 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 hod. He screamed as he ran in circles. He then ran over to the ocean and plumbing his hands in. With a more relaxed expression he sighed in relief saying, Oh dot dot yeah. Ko was the next one to try and stop Izuku accent and quickly grabbed some rope that was nearby. Izuku grabbed onto this. He called while throwing said rope. Unfortunately he too forgot he was on fire and the rope burned up instantly when Izuku grabbed hold of it. Shoulda saw that coming. Ko drawled out. He then quickly caught sight of some metal wire rope and grabbing it he shouted, Grab hold of this. Unfortunately it only worked a little longer than the normal rope when the wire rope began to heat up and melt. Ouch. Hod hod hod. Ko cried as he let go of the, the heated metal. Help. Izuku cried out desperately. I don't know. What do we do? 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 Hikari screamed as he ran in circles around Ko like a madman. Ko managed to grab hold of Hikari and SL paping high across the face to stop him exclaimed firmly, stopping panicking, calm down, and think of something to do. He then immediately turned to All Might and shouted, All Might, think of something to do. All Might gave a thumbs up and exclaimed, Don't worry my boy, I'm already on it. The hero then jumped from his spot and into the ocean where he stood knee-deep. What's he doing? Hikari questioned as he was still being grabbed by Ko. I have a bad feeling about this. Ko stated in a dreadful tone. Texas. All Might cried as he stuck his arm in the water. And oh. Hikari squeaked as he zoomed off. No wait take me. Ko cried out desperately to his fast friend. Splash. All Might finished with a boom as he forced the water out creating a huge tidal wave. With you. Ko finished his sentence meekly. Ko then immediately grabbed the first thing he could to shield himself from the incoming wave. The wave washed over a good portion of the beach the group was standing on and the water reached high enough for it to hit and douse Izuku midair. When the water subsided just as fast as it came Ko opened his eyes to notice that he was holding onto his All Might umbrella open for protection and completely dry. He let out his breath he didn't know he was holding and said, Woo, that was a close one. Thank you lucky umbrella. Ko then lifted his umbrella to look around at where everyone was now. Hikari was out of sight and probably ran off to the other side of town in fear. He'd be back soon. All Might was still in the water with a worried expression on his face. And Izuku was now lying motionless on the ground and no longer on fire. Oh my god. Izuku. Ko yelled in panic as he ran to his downed friend. With Hikari appearing not too long after. He ran to the front of the green-haired teen and exclaimed in worry. Izuku are you all naked 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 naked. Izuku was in fact naked right now. Not wearing any flame resistance clothes they all burned up to a crisp when he burst into flames. And now the teen was laying on the beach fully nude in front of his friends. If that wasn't bad enough when he fell to the ground his legs had somehow managed to bend upward at the knees and his legs spread apart revealing everything in front of his two friends and mentor. Izuku opened his eyes and slowly sitting himself up he first saw the shocked expression of his friends and mentor. He then looked down and saw his state of undress in his current position. His face went bright red, he covered his crotch, and clapped his knees shut was letting out an embarrassed scream. Ko and All Might did the most decent thing and averted their eyes while blocking the view of the nude teen with their hands. And then there was Hikari who was looking at Izuku dead on hunched over, mouth open, face flush, with a small and perverted smile on his dropped jaw and blood dripping down his nose. Ko immediately saw his more horny friend's reaction and screamed at him snaping him out of his staring. Don't just stand there you peeping Tom. Go get Izuku some clothes. He yelled at him. Hikari shook his head clear and said, Oh right that. And he was off like lightning the next second. All Might did the one thing he could and slipped off his oversized shirt and put it over Izuku's body which fell over and covered him like a dress. Izuku stood up and pulled the collar of All Might's shirt up to keep it from falling off of him through the neck hole. With a small and extremely embarrassed tone Izuku thanked All Might. After a moment All Might helped seat Izuku on the scrap metal Ko was previously resting on and let him simmer down for a time. Ko on the other hand had so many questions for Izuku and above all was worried for him out of his wits. Though he knew he had to be calm so in the softest and calmest voice he could he asked, Izuku dot 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 are you feeling okay? You're not hurt are you, I mean, you were on fire. Izuku rubbed his thighs nervously and replied meekly, I'm okay, I think. I mean I'm cold, and wet, and warm, and confused, and scared all at the same time. But I think I'm fine. 
Suddenly Hikari showed up with a stack of clothes in his hands. All right I got Izuku some clothes. He stated cheerfully. Ko crossed his arms and raising a skeptical eyebrow asked, Are they in Izuku's size? Uh, and with underwear. I'll be right back. And with that Hikari zoomed off yet again. After a few more quiet and extremely awkward moment of silence All Might finally asked the big question when he thought Izuku was ready to start speaking again. Midoriya my boy, what was that? I thought you said you didn't have a quirk. You didn't lie did you? Izuku shot his head to his idol and rapidly shook it no. With frightened eyes he exclaimed, No All Might I swear I didn't lie to you. I don't have a quirk, I mean it. The doctors said so. I'm just as surprised and confused as you are. I don't know unless. Izuku trailer off on his rant. What? All Might asked. Are you thinking of that story Auntie and Ko always told us? Ko inquiries. What story? All Might asks. I think so. Maybe Mom was right after all. Izuku confirms with Ko, ignoring All Might. Young men please. I have no idea what you're talking about. So could you please fill in the gaps for this old man? All Might exclaimed. You're not old All Might. Izuku told him. Yeah, you just look old. Ko added snarky. All Might stifled back a cough at Ko's follow-up comment and clearing his throat inquired. Anyway, about this story you mentioned. Before Izuku could speak Ko put up a hand and stated. Before we do we should wait till the road runner comes back and Izuku changes into something more decent. When will that be? All Might asked. A little bit longer than this conversation we've been having. We don't want to leave him in the dark. Ko replies. Leave who in the dark? Hikari asks reappearing to the group not missing a beat. See, Ko reassured him. After receiving the clothes from Hikari he then asked everyone to turn around while he changed. Everyone obliged ex for Hikari who glanced sneaky over his shoulder. All Might was actually the one this time to stop him and force his head to face away from Izuku. After Izuku changes quickly into his new clothes the whole group all sat down on the melted and scorched remains of fridge as Izuku explains to All Might the story. You see All Might ever since I could remember my mom always told me of this story about me when I was a child. You see when I was a toddler my mom had put me to bed like any other. That is until she found smoke in the house and my room on fire with me in the middle of it. She managed to put out the flames and found me without so much as a single burn mark. The next day she took me to the doctor to check for cork activity. They told her they couldn't find anything and to come back when I was four. Time travel a few years later and when I got tested again I was deemed quirkless and I thought I was for all this time. Well at least till today, and that's the truth. Izuku waited for All Might to answer but the blonde hero simply stayed quite with a hand on his chin in thought. Minutes of silence felt like hours for the green teen as he waited for the hero to say literally anything. Izuku suspected the worst and giving a sad sigh he finally broke the deafening silence. All Might I know you're probably trying to find a way to say this, but you don't have to, I get it. Since I have's quirk you're not gonna give me yours. Izuku said in a sad tone. Ko and Ikari both shoot death glares at the hero which were effective enough to actually scare him. The blonde muscular hero jumped to his feet waving his hands rapidly. No no no, you've totally got the wrong idea. I have no intention of doing that. I deemed you worthy of my quirk and I meant every word. All Might exclaimed. Besides there have been many holders of one for all who had quirks of their own. I was simply thinking of something else. What? Izuku asked tilting his head. I was thinking about your natural quirk and one for all. You said that you never have used your quirk since you were a baby? Yes. Izuku nodded his head. Well then in addition to molding your body to handle one for all we're also gonna have to train you to use your own quirk. Izuku nodded his head in agreement. This was all too true. Not only would he have to work twice as hard for All Might's quirk but now he would have try and control his newfound birth quirk. He thought things were gonna he intense before. But now, now things would be even harder for him. That's all well and good All Might. But do you know what this means? Hikari butted in excitedly. Shit just got harder for Izuku. Ko inquiries. No ya golden knob. It means Izuku had quirk the whole time. Izuku was never quirkless he was just a late bloomer. Hikari exclaimed while throwing his arms up. Izuku's eye widened with shock at the realization. He was so caught up in the drama that he totally forgot the best part of this moment. He was never quirkless at all. He was never quirkless. Izuku then let out a joyful scream in which Hikari and Ko soon joined in. Hikari then scooped Izuku into a bear hug and spun him around, with Ko joining them jumping onto Hikari and spinging with them. The three teen laughed and yelled and sounded off in joyful excitement until Hikari finally lost his balance and fell to the ground. All Might stood on the side watching the three teens giggle as they lay on the sand with a large smile on his face. In spite of how dangerous his job was on any given day, moments like these made it all the more wonderful. I can't believe that you were just like me as a coup. We both got our quirks late, Ko exclaimed with joy. And your fire is green just like my natural color and power. Now we're really twinsies, Ikari exclaimed with joy. I can't believe it either guys. It just seems too surreal to be true, Izuku confirmed. 
The three teen then helped each other back to their feet and once they were Izuku then said, You know, now that I have a quirk and will be getting another, we really can be the hero team we wanted to be. Ko and Hikari just looked between Izuku and one another as if he said something stupid. What? Izuku asked a bit nervous at their expressions. The two teens then started to break out into hysterical laughter which put Izuku on edge even more. What? He asked a bit more frimly. Once the two teens calmed down enough Ko was the first to speak. Don't be so high-strung Izuku. Yeah otherwise you'll burst into flames. Hikari added. We're laughing cause you really think we weren't going to become a team if you never had a quirk. Well, I, um dot 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 yes. Izuku replied as more of a question. Hikari could barely contain his laughter at Izuku's reply and expression so Ko was the one to speak. Don't you remember the promise that we made with one another when we were kid? Izuku shook his head no. We said no matter what the cause or situation. We'd become heroes and a hero team. Kogo is right Izukun powers or no powers, quirk or no quirk. We're going to become the best heroes to every walk the earth. You guys really mean it. Of course we mean it. Every last word. Izuku smiled at his friends so brightly they actually had to cover their eyes, then stuck his hand out facing down in front of him. Ko and Hikari knew what this meant and put their hands on Izuku's in their circle. We really are gonna be the greatest hero there were. Ko and Hikari nodded in agreement with their friend. Look out world cause here we come. They all shouted in unison while throwing their hands in the air. All Might laughed heartily at their close-knit friendship as it reminded him of his youthful day as a young hero in training. And it reminded him of the people he once knew but hasn't spoken to in a long time. I'm glad to see youth such as yourselves that are willing to stick with each other through anything, thick and thin. It fills this old heart with great joy. All Might exclaimed heartedly. Then his tone and attitude changed as he got to more serious subject. However we have to discuss the major things right now. For one how to intertwine your quirk training with one for all training. Second how to control your new quirk. And thirdly for you to acquire some more suitable training equipment. Izuku tapped his chin with his finger All Might was right. Now that he had two quirks, both of which he would have to train with, things were going to get really serious and so would he. I'm sure you're gonna handle the rescheduling of my training regiment right All Might. All Might smiled and gave Izuku a thumbs up. Though as far as my natural quirk training I really have no idea how to activate it. Perhaps it was activated by emotions. Some quirks are activated by that way. So what were you feeling before you burst into flames? All Might inquired. I was feeling really stressed. And frustrated, and angry I guess. Izuku listed off a few things. Anything thing else. I kinda felt like setting someone on fire dot 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 that was a new and scary feeling. Izuku said with an uneasy tone filled with dread. All Might sweat dropped and Ko quickly added his two cents saying, Well we can scratch off inciting homicidal pyromaniac tendencies in your list of how to active my quirk. Yeah so that's a no-go. Ikari agreed. All Might sighed and rubbing the back of his neck said, Well just figure that part on a later note. You also have to acquire some proper equipment for your quirk training. Equipment, like weights and stuff. Izuku inquired. I think he was referring to clothing, as in fireproof clothing. You don't want to be naked every time you activate your quirk do you? Ko asked teasingly. Oh please go for that option. Hikari exclaimed while letting some blood drip from his nose. This which earned him a punch in the jaw from Ko and his deadpan annoyed expression. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck while sweat dropping at the thought of being nude very time he used his quirk. Yeah that would definitely be really annoying and embarrassing. He agreed. Izuku then realized something and with a look of anxiousness exclaimed. But I can't get my mom to buy me an entire new wardrobe, let alone all fireproof clothing as well. She's barely making ends meet. Guess I'll just have to be naked all the time. Attack of veins appeared on Ko's head knowing full well who would speak next, and what that someone would say. Without looking at said person Ko growled under his breath and through ground teeth stated angrily. Hikari-san if you say anything perverted I'm gonna. However no a single peep from the fast teen. In fact it was almost off-putting how quiet he was, especially when it came to things like this. Ko turned his gaze to Hikari who wasn't drooling at the thought of Izuku being nude all the time but instead on his phone furiously typing something in it. Hikari-san. Hikari placed the phone up to his ear and waited for the other end to pick up. When whoever picked up on the other end did Hikari immediately exclaimed, Hi mommy it's me. Can I ask you for a favor? There was some noise at the other end, stating that Hikari's mother was asking him about said favor. Izuku needs a new wardrobe. Can you buy it for him? There was more confused sound at the other end. Well you see he just found out he has a quirk and... Hikari didn't get to finish as Hikaru's mother immediately began to make an excited noise at the other end forcing Hikari to pull his head away from the receiver. Yeah I'm just as excited as you are. The only thing is it's a fire quirk and his body burst into flames when he uses it, so it had to be all fireproof clothing. There was more noise at the other end. Yes I'll bring the lucky charm with me, he's actually standing right here. Hikari started towards Ko. Yo, was all Ko said. Okay mommy I love you too. 
Hikari made a kissing noise and hung up the phone. Well Izuku you got yourself a new wardrobe. Hikari exclaimed happily. Izuku's jaw was on the floor with this news as he stated back in utter shock. Hikari-kun this is too nice of you. I can't accept this. I'd never be able to pay you back. Hikari waved his hand dismissively and replied. Of course you can it's no trouble for us at all. Besides with Kogo we'll probably get an 80% discount on everything. Hikari stated as he grabbed Ko under his shoulders like a baby. He's right Izuku. And don't call me Kogo. Ko shouted at the tall teen and began to flail around. All Might that came up to Izuku's side and placing a huge hand on his small shoulder her made the young teen look Yuo at him. With all this in mind young Midoriya are you sure that you still want to inherit my quirk? I won't hold it against you if you don't, and I'll still gladly train you to use your natural quirk. It's all up to you. All Might told Izuku. Of course I will All Might. I won't let you down. Izuku exclaimed with a determined expression and clenched fists. I like that sound of that and I'm sure you won't. All Might exclaimed. Now then, let us get you started on your training before school starts for you three. All Might commanded to the three aspiring heroes. Yes sir. They all shouted in unison. Over the next several months much had drastically changed in Izuku's daily life. From first thing in the morning, right till the exact time when he fell asleep at night. Exercising, weight training, garbage hauling at the beach, high calorie intake and specialized meal plans, and above all quirk training. All of this coinciding with his normal routine of school, school work, and hero research and analysis. Many things had to be reduced or taken out altogether in his normal life, like TV, video games, junk food, late night videos on heroes and such, and most of all hanging out with Hikari and Ko after school and on the weekends, which had been changed to all three of them working together on training as their hangout time. Though before all this happened many other things happened on the day after Izuku discovered his natural quirk. To make it short Inko nearly crushed her son to death in a bear hug, had a small celebratory party for him, got his quirk register, took over a bazillion picture of him, fireproofed his room just in case, and received an entire new fireproof wardrobe courtesy of Hikara's mother. Though back to our special flaming green boy, it was now a satin summer and All Might had changed his workout regimen to include swimming as well, mostly along the now somewhat cleaner Dagaba beach. The day had mostly consisted like all others, move trash, perform exercises, move more trash, break, swimming, work on quirk, break, swimming, quirk training, and repeat. As of now the trio of boys were now at the break portion of their training after a round of swimming mixed with some quirk training. The three boys sat along the sandy shore looking out over the sea with the sun beating overhead, their bodies still glistening from just finishing their swim routine and their chests heaved rapidly from the intense workout in the rough waves. Each teen had a drink in hand as they relaxed. Ko was peacefully sipping out of a milk box. Hikari was greedily and noisily chugging down his seventh sports drink. And Izuku was half-heartedly drinking from his water container filled with flavored water with a disappointed expression adorning his face. The other teens took notice of their friend's current mood and silently agreed to find out what was up. What's wrong Izukun? Ko inquired. Nothing. Izuku relied half-heartedly. Nothing doesn't make that expression. Ikari put forth. I'm fine guys really, I'm just tired. Izuku tried to reinforce his statement. Ko, not believing him, sighed and said, Izuku, I've known you for years now and I certainly know the difference between tired and down. So what wrong? Nothing. He replied more firmly as he tucked his knee into his chest and looked downwards. Ko and Hikari looked at each other trying to figure out what to do. Then a sly smile appeared on Hikari's face. The tall teen then hunched himself over and rested his chin on Izuku's shoulder. The smaller teen looked up at him in question. Hikari then moved his chin up against Izuku's soft cheek. If you don't tell us what's eating you, then I'll have no choice but to scratch you up with my stubbles. Hikari stated playfully. Izuku rolled his eyes and replied, then I'll just move out of the way. Though before he could he suddenly felt something else with a scratchy surface press firmly against his other cheek, or rather someone. Izuku looked to his other side and saw Ko with the side of his head pinned against Izuku's face. If you don't sing, I'll help Zumi by scratching you up with my hair stubbles. He said playfully. Izuku looked between the two of them and exclaimed, You two wouldn't dare. The two teens smile evilly at their friend then both grabbed the green teen and began to mercilessly rub their stubbles onto Izuku's soft plump cheek. Izuku struggled and squirmed with all his might to escape. Yet no matter how hard he moved the other two teens held tightly with their combined strength. Izuku giggles and laughed furiously at the tickling sensation on both sides of his face. He laughed so hard his face went red and he could nearly breath from all his laughter. You're gonna tell us now. Ko shouted over Izuku's laughter. Or should we keep going? Akari added while digging his chin into Izuku's neck. Yes yes yes. I give I give. Izuku shouted defeat in his laughter. Ko and Akari let their friend go with satisfied looks on their faces and Izuku haunted over gasping for air while still letting out spurts of laughter. 
He coughed a few times and took a few breaths to steady himself. After he was done he looked to his friends who had an well I'm waiting expression on their faces with their bodies more than ready to restart the tickle torture if he decided to not kiss and tell. Okay now tell us what's bugging you. Ko stated firmly. Seeing no way out of it Izuku finally caved and told his friends what was on his mind. It's my quirk. The two teens looked at one another with confused expressions on their faces. What about it? Ko inquiries further. Yeah, what's not to love about it? You can fly, set yourself on fire, control produce and manipulate fire. Better question, what's not to love about you quirk? Hikari ranted on excitedly. Izuku sighed while rubbing the back of his head as he replied. It's not that, it's just the downside of it. What I mean? Ko inquiries further. What I mean is, I can't find a way around my quirk's natural weakness. If I get too cold or wet that's it, I'm out, no more fire, and then I'm useless. Izuku says in a disappointed tone. But if that happens you'll still have one for all to fall back on. Hikari added, baby. But from what All Might says one for all is really hard to master and I might hurt myself. What if we're attacked by villains while in hero training or I still don't have full control of one for all come graduation? I can't use a quirk I have no control over and end up doing more harm than good. Izuku stressed out. Izukun, calm down. You're overthinking this. Ko stresses to his spiraling friend. You know I'm right Ko-san. Every quirk has a weakness and every hero has been able to overcome their weakness, even if only by a slim margin. If I can't find a loophole around mine then how can I become a hero? Izuku shot back. Izuku then flopped onto his back exasperated as he said, I'm just frustrated. Ko tapped his chin while Hikari downed his next sports drink. Well even if we all have emitter type quirks I'm afraid I can't help you with your Damilla. My quirk works passively. Ko put forth. Then a light bulb went off in his head as he points out. But maybe Hikari knows something? Izuku turned his head to the fast teen who quickly gulped down the last of his drink and stated, Well, super speed and fire manipulation are two totally different animals. Though if I knew how exactly how you use your quirk then I might be able to give you some tips. So how do you activate it? What do you feel? Izuku thought it over for a moment then described it as best he could. Well when I do activate my quirk I reach down deep inside of me, like in my stomach, and I pull from this power that almost feels like a flame. I then grab hold of this power and when I do, well dot 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 you've seen what happens. Izuku explains. Ikari rubs chin and then asks, when you pull from this power, how much of it do you take? All of it I guess. Izuku shrugs. But when I deactivated my quirk the fire returns inside of me. Though if I get wet or too cold it goes out and doesn't ignite until I dry off or warm up. He explains further. Hikari suddenly claps his hands, causing Izuku and Ko to jump, and exclaims, Well there's your problem. You're using all your power inefficiently. You can't just take every last bit and not leave any behind. That's why you're having trouble reigniting after getting doused. Izuku rubs the back of his head awkwardly as he says, I don't follow. Me either. Ko agrees with a cocked eyebrow. Hikari quickly rubs his temples and then his hands before explaining, Okay how do I explain this to you? When I use my super speed do you think it's all in my legs? Izuku thinks it over for a moment and replies. I mean dot 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 yeah I guess. It's all in the name. Ikari then flicks Izuku on the nose while exclaiming, Wrong. I don't just use it in my legs but every part of me. My legs, my diaphragm and lungs, my arms, my throat and mouth, even my neck and eyes. Every part of my body plays a part in my quirk's usage. If I were to use only my legs then I'd get tired while I quicker and run while I slower or get hurt while I easier. So what are you saying? Ko inquiries further. What I'm saying is you're using your quirk all wrong. Next time when you pull from that fire in your stomach don't take all of it, just take enough and leave some behind. Ikari explains excitedly. Izuku rubs his thighs together nervously as he says, I don't know if I can do that. I mean, I've only just learned how to activate this power recently. I don't know if I can't leave a little bit. You'll never know unless you try. Ikari encourages him. Yeah, even if you only leave a little bit behind in you that'll be fine. Remember even the smallest embers can start a wildfire. Ko encourages as well. Izuku's looks at the ground for a time thinking things over and with a smile peeking on his face he stands up from and proud exclaiming, All right, sounds good to me. I'll give it a try. Izuku declares as he raises a fist in the air. Right after I dry off. He follows up awkwardly. Leave that to me. Hikari says quickly while grabbing hold of Izuku under his arms. Then Hikari starts to shake or vibrate Izuku at a fast pace causing all the water to fly off his body in moments. Well, 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 well. He squeaks out as he shook rapidly. Once it's over, as fast as it started, a very swirly-eyed Izuku wobbles over to Hikari and says in an extremely dizzy voice, Thanks. Once Izuku regained his equilibrium, and he stood on the beach in a meditation-style stance with his eyes closed and taking deep breaths. With his body now dry and mostly warm from the summer sun, his fire began to flicker in and out of him in short sectional bursts. Good Izuku, good. Hikari encourages him. Now look into yourself and envision that flame. 
Izuku did as he was told and looked into the center of his being, or well the center of his stomach. In his mind's eye he could see the center of his being, and it was dark and empty. However, inside of all the empty nothing he could see a small green light emanating from somewhere. He saw the green flame within him glowing brightly as he felt it and he was completed to take it all. He reached out his hand to grab the flame in all its glory and sent it through his body like he did so many times before. Though before he could take every last spark he heard a voice call out to him from the outside. Izuku. The voice called out. Don't take all of it. Just enough. Even if that enough is nothing but an ember. Izuku looked back at the flame he was now grasping in his hand. The flame's power was so compelling that it made him want to take it all. But he had to be strong. Strong as any other pro hero. He had to have resilience and self-discipline. His power made him strong but it also made him vulnerable. He had to use his power wisely or let it use him. Izuku grabbed the fire and pulled it into himself. He looked back at the spot where the fire was and saw only a few embers sitting in its place. This was good. This is what he needed. So he exited his mind's eye and activated the fire he pulled from his being. On the outside, Izuku's body immediately went up in green flames causing the ground to burn his body to float, and his friends to stand back from the roaring flames. Izuku opened his eyes and looked around seeing that he was now flying again and covered in his green fire. So, how do you feel? Ko asked from the side. Izuku shrugged as he said. Not sure really, pretty much the same. Okay, how about internally? Do you still feel the fire in your stomach? Ikari asked him. Izuku rubbed his chin at the question and closed his eyes once more to look into his being. When he did he saw that the embers he left from before had now turned into a roaring fire inside of him. Izuku shot his eyes opened with a huge smile as he nodded his head rapidly. Hikari smiled back while shaking his first excitedly. Ko looked on with a smile but went straight into asking the big question. So, will this work? The other two stopped their excitement and looked between the golden-haired teen and one another. Hikari tapped his chin as he stated, Well, no better time to test it than now. The speed teen rushed out knee-deep into the ocean water and shouted out to the flying fire teen, Are you ready Izuku? Izuku clenched his fist at his sides and with a confident smile shouted back, Bring it! Ikari then began to spin around like a top in the water until he became a living tornado that begins gushing out gallons of water in which it completely extinguished Izuku's flame body. Izuku falls on the sand fireless and completely doused. Hikari stops spinning and zooms over to his friends. You still feel the flame? He quickly asks. Izuku take another moment to look into his being and still sees the fire glowing bright in his body. Izuku looks to his friend and grins happily while nodding his head. Well don't just sit there, see if you can still flame up. Ko encourages him. Izuku nods and stands back onto his feet as his friend take a few steps back. Izuku does what he did the last time and took only so much of the fire only to leave a bit behind. Almost immediately Izuku could feel warmth rising through his cold body. And the water evaporates off him in seconds. In another moment Izuku is once again clothed in flames and the fire reignites back in his body. Izuku looks at himself and his friends with the biggest smile he's made in a long time. He lets out a happy laugh as he exclaims, I did it. Look look guys, I did it. You did it. Hickers cheers. Woo. Ko cheers. W-H-O-O-O. Izuku sires out as he blasts off into the sky over the sea. As he flies over the water he plunges his hand in and immediately feels the power dissipated and extinguished from his plunged limb. He pulls it out and almost immediately he sees it reignite. He smiles and blasts off high in the sky where he does a flip and falls straight down into the ocean waters with a splash. Back on land, Hikari and Ko were watching Izuku go absolutely nuts with excitement as he flew over the ocean like a living comet. That is until Izuku shot up in the air, pre-formed a spiral move, and then plunged straight into the water. Hikari immediately freaked out with a girlish scream and prepared to rush out into the ocean assuming the worst happened to his friend. However he was quickly tripped by Ko who was lucky enough to put his foot out at the right time. Hold on a second there Zumi. But Izuku, in the water, his quirk, his fire. Hikari freaked out as he vented to the golden teen. Ko put his, his hands to calm Hikari down and followed up saying, I'm worried about him too. But there are gonna be times when we're not gonna be there to rescue him. So let's see how Izuku flies solo style. Hikari stood up from the sand and looked out at the water waiting for Izuku to reappear. He wanted to go out and pull Izuku from the water, but Ko was right, they weren't always gonna be there to help him. So he had to let Izuku figure this one out on his own. Back with Izuku, he was not speed down through the water like a torpedo until the momentum and density of the water caused him to stop. Izuku repositioned himself upwards and swam back to the surface as fast as he could muster. As he did that, he looked inside himself and saw the fire burning away as powerful as ever, and he knew what he was gonna do with it. As soon as his head poked out of the water he caused his fire to evaporate the water on his face and ignite his body, while simultaneously causing his body to fly upwards from the fire's momentum. 
As his body continued to rise from the water he repeated the same process of evaporating the water and cloaking his body causing it to rise further and further. Until his entire body shot out of the water dried off, clothed in fire, and flying around just as he did when he plunged into the water. Izuku let off a shout of joy as he rockets out of the water and take off into the air. Ko and Hayakir are also cheering Izuku at his newest and most impressive crowning achievement of his quirk. Izuku flew from the sea back to land where his friends were waiting for him. Izuku was so happy for Hikari's help that all he wanted to do was tackle the tall teen in a huge hug. Though Hikari saw what Izuku was going to do, panicked and spun around like a top creating a mini tornado that pushed the excited teen back a bit. Izuku looked at his friend with a hurt and confused expression and he looked at him with a panicked expression. You're still on fire. Hikari shouted in panic. Izuku looked down at himself and in his excitement totally forgot that he was still on fire. Izuku extinguished himself and fell to his feet. Once he did Hikari immediately calmed down and opened his arms for Izuku's hug. Izuku took off towards his friend and leaped into his huge muscular arms, wrapping his arms around his neck and his legs around his hips. Hikari wrapped his arms around Izuku's smaller frame and began to spin him around in circles as the two of them laughed up a storm. Ko watched on in amusement and jealousy as his two friends spun around in the sand and cackle like hyenas. Thank you thank you thank you so much Hikari-kun. I couldn't have done it without you. Izuku thanked his friend over and over while hugging him even tighter. Hikari lugged and replied, I should thank you for not steering me and my good speedo on fire. Yeah, the last thing anyone here wants to see is your charred junk sticking out for all to see. Ko added in snarkily, you'd be amazed at how many people would want to see that. Hikari shot back with a sly grin, guys, please don't ruin the moment. Izuku tried to say in a serious voice but was killed by his overwhelming emotional outbursts. Sorry Izuku, the two of them said in unison. Yeah Goldie here is just feeling a bit jealous, Ikari stated as he smiles evilly towards Ko. Ko sees what the teen speed teen was up to and took a few steps back with hands raised in defense as he said, No, no, don't you dare. Ikari continued to smile, now with Izuku's evil smile, and he immediately zoomed over to the golden teen and garbed him in his arms as well. Ko screamed as he was grabbed and flung up into the air and landed on Hikari's shoulders. Hikari then began to spin around with his two friends as Izuku laughed with joy and Ko screaming like a panicked goose. Hikari spun them for a while until the tall speed teen fell to the ground in a heap with his two friends laughing alongside of him. From the sidelines, All Might looked on at the three teens in his hero form wearing his one-piece red and white sprite swimsuit and laughed at the sight reminding him of his youth and his time spent with Nana. It was the mid-evening and the sun was already begging to set. After another long and grueling day of practice and training for the three teens they all congregated on the sidewalk near the road to have a bit of small talk before All Might gave them another rousing round of his peep talks and send them off till tomorrow. They all waited on the concert dividers with their casual clothing on and training and swimsuits and plastic bags. As they waited the topic of speed came up and Akari took this opportunity to boast of his outstanding speed. Hump, well that all fine and dandy Izukun, but the real winner in any speed race would obviously be me. The speed teen boasted with a prideful expression with steam coming from his nose. I'd let any hero run to the finish line and just before they crossed I'd beaten in an instant. Well all know you can beat anyone in a foot race road runner. Ko droned out in aggravation. I don't think you'd be able to beat All Might though. He's been timed as one of the fastest heroes in any known pole. Izuku fanboyed a bit. Hikari snorted at the idea and stated with an arrogant tone, All Might, beat me. PSH, don't make me laugh Izuku. That old windbag couldn't beat ground meat with his bare fists. Oh, is that a fact? All Might asked as he magically appeared behind Hikari in hero form. All Might, Izuku shouted in surprise. Yes, that is a fact. Old man, Hikari shot back in a snarky tone. All Might gave a hearty laugh as he replied. Well, this man may be old but he still has plenty of fire left in him. The two of them locked eyes intensely with one another and then squared off looking like they were ready to duke it out. Izuku started to flare up with worry at the state his friend was about to be turned into and Ko looked indifferent through the whole ordeal. Ko then gave off a loud sigh while rolling his eyes and hopped off his seat on the divider. He walked over to the All Might Hikari, still in a standoff, and came between the two pushing them apart like children. All right, all right ladies, we get the picture, Ko exclaimed while trying his best to push them apart. Before this turns into a cup size content, let's just get straight to business. Ko then point out into a random direction of the city they're right across from and he explains. There's a takoyaki stand 20 miles due west of here. First one there and back will be the fastest man alive. Do you both agree on this? He stated in a you better agree tone of voice. 20 miles. PSH, child's play. Ikari boasted. Ha ha ha. 20 or 200, it doesn't make a difference to me. All Might agreed hardly. Then take your stances. Ko said to them. 
Ikari and All Might both got into sprinting stances at the imaginary line on the road with serious eyes glued on the out-of-sight objective. Ko raised his hand as he said, On your marks. Ikari and All Might's legs muscles tensed up. Get set. Ikari and All Might butt cheeks tightened at the same time. Ko let out a soft but disgusted sigh before shouting, Go. And just like that the tall electric green teen and the top hero were gone in a flash of twin smoke trails. The air current they created was so powerful that Ko had to grab onto a divider and Izuku flared up and flew to keep from blowing over. Once the air was normal again the two teens stood there and waited for the victor to zoom in. Izuku took a moment to search up something on his phone and when he found what he wanted his eyes widened with shock as he looked over to the golden-haired teen next to him. What? Did you know there was a takoyaki stand 20 miles from here? No, why do you ask? Izuku said nothing in return and simply showed his phone's screen to Ko. On the device showed a nearby takoyaki stand that was 20 miles due west of where they were. Ko whistled with an unimpressed expression as he said, Wow, my lucky shields is even bigger than last month's. That is spooky, Izuku said to himself. Meanwhile the two racers were neck and neck with each other, with one only behind able to put speed the other by a hair. They both of them looked at one another giving competitive glares trying to throw the other off. I have to give you credit old might, for an aging windbag you're really fast. No person has been able to keep pace with me, especially for this long. Ikari shouts to his competitor. Ikari smiles smugly at the now flying hero and scoffed when he was out of sight. Oh all might, this isn't even my final form. Ikari said to himself as green lighting crossed around his body and he disappeared into nothing. All might was now making bounding jumps across the city until he finally made it to the takoyaki stand and came to a screeching halt. Just before he left with another bound he quickly waved a friendly hello at some stunt civilians and took off once more. After a dozen large leaps all might finally arrived at the beach once more coming to yet another screeching halt. Once he stopped he flexed his arms in the air with head held high as he bellowed out a great laugh while saying, It was a good race young Hikari, however you must know that as a pro I have years of experience ahead of you and Just before he could continue with his victory speech he heard a voice say to him, Oh hey All Might you're finally here. All Might flicked his head over to the voice and saw Ko Izuku and Hikari all sitting comfortably on the concert divider while chewing down on some takoyaki. All Might immediately lost his concentration and began spitting out blood while shifting back to his civilian form. Once he cleared the blood from his mouth he shouted, What in the, how in the, if you're wondering, he's been here for a whole 20 seconds before you arrived. Ko cut him off while stuffing his face with some takoyaki. All Might shook his head rapidly at what he told him and exclaimed, When did you get that takoyaki? Did you wait in line? Hikari waved off the question and replied, Don't be ridiculous, I just went in there and took some. I do this all the time when I need a snack. You stole it. All Might exclaimed in shock, Don't be so dramatic. After I grabbed what I wanted I left money on the counter. They get cash with exact change and I don't have to wait. Everyone wins. All Might rubbed the back of his neck and sighing he admits his defeat. Well young Hikari I have to give credit where credit is due. You certainly outdo me to speed in all regards. You truly are the fastest man alive. Told you so. Hikari said proudly. Ko laughed and cut in saying. If you think he's fast you should see his older sister. Now that bitch can run. Who is your sister exactly? All Might asked Hikari while ignoring the last part of Ka's sentence. You probably never meet her. Her name is Golden Lace. Hikari quickly explains. H-M-M-M-M-M, Golden Lace. Golden Lace, Golden Lace, Golden Lace. All Might repeat the name to himself. Just then he snapped his fingers and exclaimed. Oh now I remember that name. I did actually work with her on one occasion. Though we never got the chance to speak to one another. Shed always. Vanish. All Might said the last part like he realized something while his eye moved over to Hikari. HMP, now that answers some questions. Hikari then stuffed his mouth with a few more takoyaki before saying, Since you did take your failure like a good sport, and as a show of good sportsmanship, I'll share some of my takoyaki with you. All Might made a gesture to decline the offer but Ko piped up before the hero could. Take it All Might. Hikari-chan never shares food with anyone he doesn't feel close to. Yeah All Might they're really good. It's his dark chocolate and powdered sugar on them, try it. Izuku exclaims with mouth half full holding a piece of takoyaki out on a toothpick. All Might begrudgingly takes the piping hot takoyaki and says a small, thanks for the food, before blowing and eating the sweet treat. 
All Might smiled as he for once in a very long time he didn't taste copper mixed with his food and the fact he could actually taste it for once. It sent a brief wave of relief and happiness all over the hero's body. Several more months had come and gone by like the wind and the three teens had drastically improved well. Everything about them, in terms of training, fighting, and quirk usage. However, it was still over four months away from the entrance exam at UA to begin, so four more months of training to utilize to its fullest. It was a crisp early morning with the air at a cool 60 degrees with the sun just starting to peek up over the horizon. All Might was walking down the street to the beach in a heavier jack due to the colder air. Like every single day All Might would get up early and make his way to the bus stop and then walk the rest of the way to the beach. Like every single day All Might would come to a stop sign that just bordered the beach. And like every single day he would come to the sign take a breather and then have a very familiar green streak race by him. He came to the stop sign and there with his palm held up and open, fully well knowing of what was to come next. He stood there for a moment and looked down at his watch, watching the seconds tick by just like clockwork. Once the seconds hand hit the 58 second mark he counted down, 3 2 1. Just then a green streak zoomed past All Might shouting a quick, Hi All Might, by All Might. And when it passed, in All Might's hand sat a carton with a small coffee and a bagel wrapped in tin foil. It had become a sort of tradition for All Might to receive a light breakfast from Hikari as he zoomed by him every morning. It saved All Might some time on making or getting breakfast at a store and gave Hikari an excuse to run to the store for a snack run. All Might made a content sigh as he took his coffee and proceeded to drink from it while he walked. As he did it wasn't too long before he accidentally bumped into Hikari's back. He stuttered and sputtered trying not to drop or spit his food and drink onto the teen's back. All Might forcefully swallowed hard and took in a sharp breath. When regained his breath he was nearly ready to scold Hikari for for standing right in front of him, until he saw his posture and expression. Hikari was stiff and silent with a shocked expression on his normally hyper face, like he was entranced by some amazing sight, something he wasn't known for doing. The donut box he held in his hand had fallen down and were scattered all over the floor, and his coffee was dripping out of his gaping mouth. All Might looked around him and also saw Ko standing there with a similar expression on his face with his lucky coin no longer in his hands and instead laying on the ground. All Might was begging to get a bit worried for the two teens and whatever has shocked them so bad to pure paralysis. When he followed the direction of the teen's gazes he saw something that nearly took his breath away. Oh my, oh my goodness, was the first thought that came through the blonde hero's mind. In front of him in the rising colors of the morning sun outstretched a completely clean beach without so much as a speck of trash to be seen, and a huge pile of all that trash sitting on the sidewalk ready to be hauled away with a very familiar standing on top of it all. Izuku Midori, standing on top of a pile of garbage shirtless and drenched in sweat from head to foot letting out a pure unfiltered war cry into the open air. All Might was in complete shock of what he was looking at and the only thing that could escape his lips were, holy, stinking, super crap. He shouted the last part while shifting into his hero form. Izuku let R one more scream before his body tension released and he fell from the pile and falling straight towards the beach. All Might was quick to action as he jumped over the railing and caught Izuku midair. Akari finally snapped himself out of his shock and zoomed down after them with Ko jumping the railing towards the beach. Once All Might set Izuku on his feet and the other's teens caught up he looked at his protease with glittering pride. There are not many movements in All Might's life where he said that he was truly astonished. But this was certainly one of them. I did it All Might. I cleared the beach. Izuku spat out weakly. Indeed you did my boy. You did that and so much more. Not only did you clear the whole beach but you did it in such a short time frame no less. You have truly gone above and beyond all my expectations of you, bellowed All Might. Well that and he had help from us, Ko butted in, only to revive a sharp elbow from Hikari to his ribs. The OF, but yeah, it really was all you Izuku. Ko follows up while trying to mask the pain. Izuku's eyes began to water up with tears of joy as he said between shaking breath, I feel so blessed, as if I cheated on this. Nonsense my boy, just look at this. All Might exclaimed while taking out his phone and pulling up a pic for Izuku to view. It was the same picture of Izuku from several months ago. Him laying in the sand crying his eyes out as Hikari photobombed the pic with Ko. In such a short span of time you have completely molded yourself into a different person from who you were. You should feel proud of that. All Might exclaimed while turning the picture back to himself. He smiled at the before image of a crying wimpy Izuku crawling in the sand. And dropped a phone to not only see the after Izuku before him but also to see Hikari had put himself and Ko into a similar position when they photobombed the before image. All Might Sweat dropped at this and clearing his throat finished off as strongly as he did before, and so am I young Midori. You are hereby truly ready to inherit my power. All Might continues while plucking out a single strand of his hair. Izuku looked onto his idol, face gushing with happiness and body swimming with pride. Whatever was to happen in the future, as long as he worked hard, he would be ready for it no matter what. Now then, All Might began. 
Eat this. Izuka's face immediately went slack at that sentence and he stared at his idol with a blank expression while asking. What? All of a sudden both Ko and Hikari began to laugh uncontrollably at All Might's last sentence, with Ko doubled over clutching his sides and Hikari on the sand laughing his ass off. Stop laughing you two, you're not helping anymore. Izuku yelled at them. In order to gain my quirk you must ingest my DNA. Now eat, eat, eat. All Might bellowed while trying to shove his hair down Izuku's throat with a hectically screaming Izuku. 